uh, we'll segue this and I'll make a video on like packing a pack. And then uh, when I told that to my guys, I was a SEER specialist at the time, which is a survival instructor in the military. All my guys, we carry packs all day, every day, just all through the mountains all the time. And they're like, it's just what they know. So they're like, that's the stupidest video idea ever. <laughs> Everybody knows how to pack a pack. I'm like, I think I've got a hunch that people actually don't know. All right, what is up, everybody? I have Jim to my right, and we have special guests across from us, real live human being people. We have Mr. Michael Jones and Micah Mayfield. You you might know, not that. What they, they might not. That was good. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? It was good. It's you still forgot good. the name of the this channel, didn't you? Not stopping either. Like this is going to no, continue I'm to go. No, it's in no, it. No, we are not. We are not. I'm I'm captain yeah, of this ship. Even we are I thought I didn't say Micah. You said you it. Did. You, you said it. You're Michael. panicking right now. Well, it's because there's so many M's. Uh, Michael Micah. Jones, Micah Mayfield. It's just a yeah, lot. Yeah, it was of, a lot. You did yeah. it right. You're and then, panicking. And hey. then I, I second guessed myself, and then like you're you said, the, Jim, I panicked. You're in the red. You're in the black right now. I love it. It's gotta... So moving forward, since nobody will let me stop. Perfect. <laughs> you may know Michael Jones if you're out there in the audience as AKA Grantham. The 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 Grantham. <laughs> the Flannel Daddy. Oh God, we, we might get into that. Yeah, yeah, we we can do that. What's your favorite cuddle, color? Plaid. <laughs> I'll take co anything that Cool makes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Or Lululemon. We were just talking about that. The favorite color of plaid. Lululemon doesn't make any plaid. They make plaid. Oh, do oh. they now? I don't know. Plaid's very in. Don't you kind of hate it when you get stuff from the brand Cool and your wife will be like, "What shirt are you wearing to dinner tonight?" And you're like, "My Cool shirt." Oh, and then. It, that one guy jumps in and goes like, is oh, it a cool is it, is it shirt? Cool? Oh, and yeah. you're like, never heard that word before. <laughs> <laughs> Let's punch him. Uh, <laughs> I do always feel a little childish, though, when it's like, what shirt do you want to wear today, honey? My cool one. My cool, My cool shirt. shirt. Yeah. My what's cool the, pants. What's the meme where it's like men turn 30 and choose one of these things as their personality, and it's like Arcteryx. Cool. Patagonia. Patagonia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's us. Yeah. That's all of us. Yeah. 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 I have no personality. I identify as cool. I identify as Patagonia. <laughs> I like it. I'm wearing my cool I pants I think that's today. a good plan. I wear like the same three shirts. Like if I, f I find like three things that I like, and they're one. just my go-tos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been noticing a lot of Stone Glacier though. I've been yeah. liking Yeah, yeah they're, they're making, they make awesome nice stuff. You just got a couple. Of, yeah, yeah the down coat. I love their down coat. Oh, their down coat yeah, is so good. Good puffy. Mm -hmm. yeah, surprisingly, I got them for the packs, but then the clothing. We can have a little clothing. We can have a little clothing. As a treat. As a treat. Yeah. I just I just. I ran uh, their pack and their clothing on um, Kodiak a couple weeks ago. What oh, pack nice. were you using? It was the Evo 6900. Nice, nice. Good choice. Yeah, really liked it. I'm yeah. more of their, a lot. their roll top kind of ultralight stuff. I love that kind of stuff. He's a very ultralight yeah. backpacker type of guy. If I can put like 20 pounds on my back for like 10 days, that's That's not it. To I be do. clear to the audience, this isn't a good idea. Yeah. I don't get no, this. That's yeah, a terrible Cuban idea. fiber tent, roll uh, top here we packs. Go. Like, you obsess over the weight though. Yeah. Do you have a spreadsheet? <laughs> there have been times where I specifically plotted out the uh, the river so I didn't carry any water. But just, weren't uh, some of those intermittent? Filtered it as I went. Yeah. Oh, that's. Do you have a spreadsheet? Uh, for some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Because we have a lightweight Dave uh, here who's been on the podcast before. Oh, great. They can. Um, I, he's I, my brother, I actually. So yeah, we can we can totally talk yeah. crap about him. Yeah. But um, we call him lightweight Dave because he has he has a spreadsheet. It's nice. that bad. Yeah. I love it. You're a big yeah, Dyneema you're guy, that. huh? Yeah. Michael. All the Dyneema, all the Cuban fiber, all that, all that mm. good stuff. Yeah. Cubans. Cubans. All, it's all. primo, yeah. Micah loves the gear when it comes to backpacking. Yeah. Like how light can it go? I've gotten a little more bougie over the year. Hey, what was, been, how long okay. was it between Getting you and my luxury items? Like, wouldn't you just go to the stream, drink all your water, and then continue without yeah, carrying Yeah, no, any I water? wouldn't carry spare water, so I'd, I'd stop die. at the stream. That's a terrible I idea. Would, I would filter die. the water. Filter, 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 filter. Drink two or three bottles, maybe put like a liquid IV in one, and then you are not a camel. Not that carry any work. more weight on the, and then keep going till the next stream. <sighs> okay, let me. Okay, S confidence level still like here very to high that you oh, that yeah. there was water in the next confidence stream. Confidence level very high, or was he very young when he did I've, it? I, I've done the Wonderland. I've done a bunch of big, you know. No, 90, he's done. That's what's miles. terrifying I've about done this. All of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I I don't go into these things hoping. There are streams, to be clear. It's more okay, of a... Okay, that was my question. It's more of a... These are very calculated. I, I was obsessed with getting my pack super light. Yeah. I, I never was... 
well, if the stream wasn't there, then I was at risk. But I, I, I did my research. <laughs> ah, intermittent <laughs> yeah. stream isn't running. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> I'll tell I you, hadn't had uh, it. It's dry so this week. I wouldn't recommend it, but I was just obsessed. <laughs> <Yeah>. with, <laughs> <laughs> to be clear to anyone yeah. listening, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend doing oh, that. Yeah, oh, to be clear, it's a terrible idea. It's a horrible idea. Everybody oh. thinks it's cool now. Cool. Uh, yeah. K U H. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> very, no, very my clothing's cool too heavy you. for that. Oh no. Wow. I get. I, I'm petrified of like not being able to find water. water. Yeah. Like that's so like a big are, deal to there me. There are many ways to find water, my friend. Yeah. When we were on Our, Kodiak, I just yeah. tell one anecdotal story though. So they had gotten tons of rain, like up until well, actually it was raining when we got there too. But where the plane landed, there was like. Just a rushing stream. I was like, "Oh, dude, that like we're gonna make a little base camp there." I'm like, "No, we got water yeah. for years at this." <laughs> Good to go. Then we went up, you know, hiked, whatever, stayed for a few days, shot some deer, and then when we came back down, stream was dry, yeah. and we had gotten rain while we were there. It was unbelievable. so. It is a thing. Wow. And so I, I hiked like up, Mike, up it like Mike quite a ways. I would have died. I'd have died. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> have been in big well, trouble. Well, yeah. Were you out of water? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I guess I died. Guess I died. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also do this with your uh, like camera equipment now and stuff? Like, do you guys, if you're going to film on location, yeah, are you looking at like the soil sediment and thing to hey, like? Mike. I can make a lens. <laughs> I can make a lens with the minerals that are here at our. Hey, Mike, how great is it that you don't have to worry about me charging batteries now? He's like, oh, it's great. Uh, one sec, I gotta go. Get some batteries. <laughs> or, or batteries out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mike, isn't it great that you hired me and you never have to worry about camera equipment? Like, you know, all the batteries are charged, all this and that. And as I'm saying that, I'm like, <laughs> you're getting that little no narrator. Here. The battery oh. wasn't charged. <laughs> to be clear, this is me too. We had a that VZ58 video. We probably had to go out how many five, six times to film yeah, that because yeah. we kept At forgetting. At least four. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> So bad. It was like, we're not going to forget the microphone this time. <laughs> we, we forgot it twice in a row. And then we didn't forget the microphone, but we forgot the microphone cable. Cable. Mm. That was yeah. it. the and thing that makes it work. And yeah. I think I forgot the mags for like, like yeah. you had everything yeah. that I forgot. And you the were mags. like, well, I have the mags in my carrier. <laughs> but no gun. But, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who needs a gun to do a gun review anyhow? It's awesome. This is actually making me feel really normal because I'm like the king of forgetting Lots of things. It's yeah, true. All the it's, time. it's true. It's terrifying. Like, I set things down and just like poof, gone. Yeah, it's terrifying to be to to be viewed as a professional, and then you're like, well, we're anything but. So you good, just laugh. Yeah, good luck. Just, just laugh. laugh. What else can you yeah. do? Be angry. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly angry. Mostly that's what angry. I would. That's probably where I just start. Angry. Is the range that you go to? Is there like a range you always go to, and is it not far, or is it like when you forget something, you're like. You know, it's ours, okay, and we, we're, we're only like 30 minutes away. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. super convenient. But we have a new range now. Yeah. Like, that's actually a good segue. Right there. Which is a gates. little further. It's approximately eight hours further. <laughs> yeah, but we're, so we're actually oh. relocating now. So we were in uh, Washington. Now we're headed out to Boise. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're super excited, and uh, the range is just right there in Boise area, just north of it. And so That's such a good spot, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah, is that really awesome. Is it because of the range that you're moving, or is it because of also like your job that you have that you do besides of you? Yes. To that you're moving, or like so what's going on? Put it. That's what sent it over the edge. It was always on the, on yeah. the plan. Yeah. Tell but, the story. But, Mike knows but, as well. Uh, long story short, I mean, Mike and and Ash have always wanted to go to Boise. Facts. Um, that's and it's just a great place to live. You know, it's nice and pretty and clean, um, and the, there's a lot more land out there available mm-hmm. uh, a lot of blm land which is bureau of land management for people i mean everyone on your podcast probably knows that um, <laughs> there's a good chance but it's good yeah, to clarify yeah um but anyway then the laws started ga- kind of going through and we yeah. lost 10 uh we're to 10 round magazines out in washington yep. now and so <sighs> that's yeah, kind of what we can now go to idaho and have 30 round magazines as, as a little a, as treat a treat, as a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and so I mean, the the dream has always been that in my mind, I wanted to be able to like have like a range that was zero to three hundred, right? And that was a beautiful setting, and that I could shoot that zero to three hundred, and then I could turn and mount up on a barricade or prone out and shoot over a thousand. Mm-hmm. We have that with our new range. Give it the combo. Yeah. Uh, uh, beautiful lighting. Beautiful lighting. Beautiful be- scenery. Uh, Good subject matter. Yeah, good subject yeah. matter. Yeah, so that's like the three. That's the, the trifecta for us. And that's actually patented for anybody who's listening. So Okay. Is Does, it? And no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, actually what we do it. as well. We just say patented, and we assume that we're covered with whatever idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah, good. The patent portfolio is, yeah. is unreal. <laughs> is the sun better in Boise? 
Oh, of course. Like the lighting, you mentioned that's pretty the sun, key. The sun shines a little bit better on the people because Le- they're happier. Less clouds. Mm. Well, because they have 30-round mags. Ex- yeah. The, man, yeah. the key knows. to happiness. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 30-round mm. magazines are the key to happiness. But no, I mean, like real talk, like we're super excited because, um, you know, current rate, <laughs> it's funny because we, we do kind of complain from time to time about our current range. We're like, oh, we can only do this. But at the same time, like... We have our own range. This is our land. Private. That it's private. It's it's just us. So it's like, dude, very few people have this. We're able to shoot and do whatever we want. Um, it, but, you know, you always want more. So yeah. this this land was kind of the natural evolution for us. But it's weird because we got to give the people what they want. Exactly. And people demand ex- 50 cows exploding in the air. It's I what gets know. the you people know what I mean? going. Yeah. And, and now we own, like, this entire mountain valley into a draw. So we, it's... Dude, unbelievable. Yeah. It's, That's it, great. It's crazy. Um but, uh, I mean, it's crazy to think about because, you know, we're at this, but I think about like when I started and like when I started, uh, I, you know, some, there was some farmer who went to my church and I was like, Hey, can I shoot in your, on your land? He was like, yeah, sure. I have this huge range. And I went there and it was like a 15 yard range and dude, no crap. I ran, I ran almost all my videos out there for, you know, until I got, that was when I was stationed at Fairchild. And then once I got stationed over at uh, JBLM, then we got this new land. But yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, the progression of the ranges, you know, has been crazy to me. Because like 15 yards, 300 yards, 30,000 yards. No. 5,000 5, 5, 5, yeah. yards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just 30,000. I mean, we got well, well, I mean, yeah. to invent a new gun. Going and to BLM, yeah. I guess it would be. That's why I kind of yeah. said that. Because mm-hmm. we really can... Uh, to quote Napoleon Dynamite, throw a 50 cal over them there mountains. Th- that would oh, be like a that. bad idea. But if my insurance people are listening, <laughs> that is not true. The mountains are a man after I had a 50 cal in high school. It's theoretical. <laughs> Theoretically, correct. Um, we would never take a 50 cal. We would never lob a 50 cal round over no. a mountain. One of our video ideas is not how far can a 50 cal go. <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, that is a good when idea. Real, <laughs> now that you've asked the question, when yeah. the real bullet cam comes out, not the April Fool's, <laughs> yeah, the April video Fool's bullet version. Cam. Yeah. We do need to clarify again, yeah. though, for you guys, patented. Yes, yes. patented. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Everything else that we talk that. about no is exactly patented. Um, we did do a real good job clarifying there. Uh, thank you, Mike, of, of what BLM stands for. We, we got to <laughs> really clarify, though. Like some people might be listening, and they're like, "Flannel Daddy." Oh god! It's real oh. fast, real quick. You got so it. You're, 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 the obligatory, the obligatory grand thumb flannel hello, daddy. We'll get him out of the way. Yeah. Hello, and my name we'll is. Hello, my name is Michael Jones. I run the channel Grand Thumb. This is Micah Mayfield. He is my camera guy for the last what, two, two years. Two now, years? Yeah, yeah, two I do years all the now. editing. I make all the, the colors editing. look nice. Yeah, and he's everything. the color. Yeah. the color master. Uh, so Grand Thumb. Thank you. <laughs> that's see, that's good. Yeah, um, that'll wrap up this episode. Yeah, that's, uh, Vortex that's Nation. it for Vortex. <laughs> um, uh. But I, I feel like we did start. You know, we kind of started over here, kind of jumped around a little bit. Mm-hmm. But like, I think this is kind of like the. You know, I bet you're wondering how I got here, sort of thing. Narrator, so I yeah. do want to like kind of jump back to some of those beginnings that mm-hmm. you were talking about. Sure. Um, you know your your career path, sure. how that maybe dovetailed in with you know becoming. Yeah, a content did. creator. Yeah, hundred percent, it did. Um, I mean, how far back are we going? Break out the time machine. <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah. So I mean, uh, Grantham essentially started because, um, well, one, I thought Grantham was a cool name. You it know? is. Mm-hmm. I, thought, I thought it'd be like a good Easter egg. You know, if you knew something about guns, and then you're like, ah, you know, the Grantham. When you put your thumb in the Emerald Grand, when you're loading it, if you're kind of errant with your responsibilities of loading, you'd catch your thumb. So people who knew it would be like, oh, that's cool, and people who didn't would be like. It's kind of a bizarre name. It's in your head now. I'm mm-hmm. stuck. I'm in your head. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really came about. Um, I did make videos earlier, um, but they that was it was just kind of for fun. I've always liked to make videos, but like when it got serious was like 2017, I think. I say this every time I say this, like I get the date slightly wrong. I should really go back to my old videos and look to see precisely when it was. But 2017 ish is when. <clears throat> We got issued uh, JPCs uh, at the military, and uh, everyone was like trying to figure out how to set up their JPCs. And uh, you know, I was kind of like the resident gear dude, and so they're like, "Hey, Mike, how do I set it up?" So I was like, "Hey, here's how you set up your JPC." And then um, you know, another guy would ask me, and I'd show him, and I'd show him. And I was like, "I'm just gonna make a video." I'm like, "Even better, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video like that anybody could watch if they wanted to. I'm not gonna make it like specific to to just my people." So I released it, and it got like. I don't know, like 100,000 views super fast. And I was like, okay, well, uh, we'll segue this and I'll make a video on like packing a pack. And then uh, when I told that to my guys, I was a SEER specialist at the time, which is a survival instructor in the military. All my guys, we carry packs all day, every day, 
just all through the mountains all the time. And they're like, it's just what they know. So they're like, that's the stupidest video idea ever. <laughs> Everybody knows how to pack a pack. I'm like, I think I've got a hunch that people actually don't know. So I, um, I did the video on packing a pack. And the first comment was, um, you're super dumb because uh, you need to put all your heaviest stuff at the very bottom of the pack. And you're stupid because you said not to do that. I was like, that's cool, man. Go ahead and you know, go out and put all the heavy stuff at the bottom. So I showed that to my buddies and they're like, okay, maybe people don't know how to pack a pack. <laughs> there you go. I want to know what happened to that guy if he went ahead and took his own advice and put like oh, he's, 50 we, pounds of gear at the bottom of his rucksack and then tried to hike it. Is. I hope he learned his lesson. Yeah. Or, or more than likely, he probably had never backpacked before. But he was still no, an expert. Though. That but can't. he was an expert. No. No. no, Mike, you don't you have to do it. You do not you have to do the activity to be an expert. Comment unless you're an expert. And if you're online, you're an expert. True. True. Yeah, you just need Proof enough. Uh, That's why when you get Internet Explorer, even though Internet starts with an I, it's actually the logo is an E for expert. Internet uh, expert. Uh, no, I, I didn't know I didn't, that. I didn't realize. That. I actually, actually yeah. I haven't used Internet Explorer in like 10 years. Yeah. Whatever happened to it? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Google Chrome ate it. But yeah, so I mean, that's how Grantham started. Um, uh, by the way, I think yeah. the majority of people watching those videos were airsofters. Probably. Because I, when I, whenever uh, me and my friends, because I knew about Grantham way before I started working for Grantham. Cause oh, I, it's, a great, I, it's a great story how we met. I had way. a JPC, I and uh, I was an airsofter way back, and I was like, I don't know how to set up my JPC, and I'm pretty sure it was like one of the only videos out there on how to set up a JPC. Blind leading the blind. And so, Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one, Mark. Yeah, it's okay. Let's go. It's okay. What's a JPC? Oh, JPC. Okay, jumpable plate. Carrier. Yeah, jumpable plate carrier. Ooh, it's, okay. It's from Cry. So, uh, Cry at the time, well, still does issue kind of all the plate carriers that are in use within SOCOM and AFSPEC War, and and so you have two different type. Well, you have many, but the two main ones are the ABS and the JPC, and so that's all it is. Okay. So JPC made big waves. Yeah, big waves. It, big, it was like one of the first very small, very minimalistic plate carriers that, that, were, that came out, and so um, back in the day it was a big deal, but it was also so minimalistic that people kind of didn't know what they were doing because um, there just wasn't a whole lot of... Like You've like seen it. them. It has, those, it oh, has yeah. those tan yeah. triangular with a hole in it shoulder strap. They're very iconic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I have. Yeah. I just uh, I probably even heard JPC before. But you've, you've heard it before. Fine. I guarantee. You're, you're fine, man. Um, stop me if I, because I, I, I do those Mil stupid uh, military. Whenever, I, whenever, military, I, so whenever I get around Mike and all his buddies or anything, I literally see <laughs> myself out of the room so I don't hear... You know the non-provisive environment and the uh, QRS was up, and we came up to the, Q the QBZ, and we were wearing our JPC, and we rolled up on ZB13, and it's like right, oh right. yeah, the ZB13, cool. yeah, of course, yeah, <laughs> 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 every time. Uh, um, yeah, so I mean, it came about because of that, and then um, you know, I started, I did gear for the longest time, and started kind of getting into guns. Bought a Mark 18 with a suppressor and. And then I originally just kind of set up a tripod like in front of me and I just kind of shoot around it. And I was always like, haha, what if I shot the camera? And then um, eventually I got a buddy to start filming for me. And, you know, we did that for a long time. And then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we met at, yes. a shooting, at a shooting class. And I, I had the shooting <laughs> class had kind of been pushed on Instagram as like. Guess who's going to be in our shooting class? Grant Dunn's I was a nobody at the time, too. And uh, <laughs> I think it was like 300,000 uh, subscribers. So I was like, oh, Grant Thumb, I want to go to the shooting class. And so <laughs> I go to the shooting class, and um, I'm like, I'm a camera guy. I can, <laughs> Big I can shoot my shot, you know? And so I go there, and there's all these people, like, basically waiting in line to meet Mike. And Mike's like, uh, you know, kind of just like, what is happening? Like, I just want to shoot. I just wanted to shoot guns, yeah. man. I didn't want uh, I, I to. So I didn't want to add to it. So I kind of, like, awkwardly waited outside of the right, line. Right. Which he probably just saw me over there going, like, like back, <laughs> keep checking. Yeah. And then finally when it was done, I'm like, hey, by the way, my name's Micah. I'm a camera guy. And uh, he's like, oh, cool. Yeah. I just uh, moved over here and uh, I kind of need a camera guy. You should hit me up on Instagram, which uh, I did. And that message never got opened ever. And then I got so angry, I unsent the message. And just, <gasps> oh, yeah. you can unsend? You oh, can yeah. click you can, and unsend that. Oh, that's down. A whole, yeah. And I was like, well, another conversation. I tried. There's and, like a, uh, away I go. This Wait, is like uh, a romantic comedy. Never, uh, it is a little he bit. never responded. Never, never meet your did. heroes. You huh? got, you <laughs> got <laughs> like shut down real never hard. Never meet your heroes. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, uh, we got linked up like maybe a couple months later. 
Yeah, I think but, so. Uh, a mutual friend. Yeah, uh, by mutual friend, and then uh, he's been filming. For it's me. funny because yeah. he, you know, what he asked the mutual friend. He's like, "Hey, I need a camera guy. I did. Do you know anybody who can film?" And I'm like, "I was there the whole time. I was. You were always he was, there. He was, yeah. al- he was always there. Silent, <laughs> silent. silent. Did you have like a bit of a glow up between? <laughs> your <initial laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> have you ever heard that? What do you mean? What do you yeah. Mean? What do you oh, define? Uh, uh, hold on. So that's define glow. Up. That's something to see. This is yeah. This I don't is, know. Now that's uh, uh, you can put that with JPC. <laughs> somebody for me, out there, somebody out there who's like me and married married to a gal who's like from a family of of all girls. Well, maybe know this one, but uh, it's like when Can't you start wait. out when you're younger and you're really not very good looking, and then everyone's <laughs> kind of just like th- okay. you know all the oh. girls are like yeah, not interested, it, not interested. And then like next thing they know, they bump into you, and it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and everybody's back home, and they're Dude. like, "Who's that?" Yeah. Because you got super He's handsome, super hot, uh, right? To be and clear, no, it was like a month apart. Oh, got it. Okay. So I was the exact same person. <laughs> yeah, the same person. Yeah, I think you actually I, mean, I didn't trust him when I first met him. Yeah, yeah, because well, he was to, waiting outside for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, we had, we had two camera guys, and uh, the original camera guy who wasn't Mike, I was like, it was Qua. Qua. Yeah, it yeah. was Qua. And I was like, I was like, yeah, you get these main shots. Mike is like, B cam. So I showed up. <laughs> Actually, what happened was Qua <gasps> slept right. in. He didn't he show up. Oh. So I shouldn't have even really been filming. He was so terrified of my stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I know how to do this. Like, I'm, I'm good at this. I promise. Like, and then, so I ended up being a cam, I guess you could call it. Yeah. And he's like, holy crap this is pretty good like oh it was and good, then i helped yeah. him color grade it and he's like so uh do you want to film for you want film <laughs> or qua qua could have been uh been the camera guy yeah. if only he hadn't slept in if only like you said it is you like romantic com- comedy though qua, no. qua. No. do you think qua will watch this yeah he supports his friends fair i, That's I, fair. I believe yeah. i want to believe i want to believe yeah. when he's awake yeah <laughs> qua is like three foot five asian asian yeah but he's great because, you know, he's he's small. He can get in there with the camera. Yeah. Angles, you know, he does like little back flips when he films. Yeah, impressive. No, really? <laughs> impressive. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's uh, and I started then, filming it's like for the, Mike. The, yeah. the backup QB comes in it and then just it. goes off. And I, like, I think, <laughs> yeah, this guy should start. Yeah. I gotta. So I gotta ask, like, you guys. So you do a lot of like gear reviews and you'll do gun reviews and stuff like that. You know, and. And everybody loves to tune to that. I like tuning into mm-hmm. it. Um, at what point? Maybe, at what point are you doing like gear and gun reviews, where you're like, I'm just doing this because like I got to get all this stuff, and I'm just doing it because I like it. And then all of a sudden, it's like now everybody and their mother, who's a company who has anything gear related, wants you to do their thing. Like, well, sure. when does that flip? And then all of a sudden you're like now probably having to be like, actually, no, I'm not going to do that one. And no, I'm not going to. You're going to be more I mean, choosy. I mean, we've been there for a while. I mean, it's the kind of unfortunate side because the fun part about being smaller was you're, I feel like you're more flexible, you know, because mm-hmm. it, it's like you're going to get the views that you're going to get, you know, kind of no matter what what type of content. And then you, as you start kind of growing, I guess, like you, you start kind of because of the way that the YouTube algorithm works, you kind of have to game the system a little bit. Because YouTube's kind of specific about, hey, you drop views or you drop average, you know, view duration and that type of thing. It's going to affect the way they're going to promote your videos and stuff. So, like, you got to be a little bit more pointed and focused with your content, which is unfortunate because I think sometimes we we end up kind of leaving off uh, smaller companies. I think are that you know I would like to like maybe do a full video on them, but it's like. You know, things that I find like incredibly interesting at times, you know, wouldn't really translate well to an entire video. And we've learned that the hard way many times. Um, But I mean, that's why we're kind of doing more varied content like the Instagram. We're doing uh, we're starting YouTube shorts in just a a couple couple weeks here. Nice. Where that's going to allow us to kind of do a lot of this content that I that it's kind of more what I kind of wanted to do. We're not just what I want to do, what we want to do, but like yeah. some of those more focused topics where it's like I can't make like a 20 minute video on like a charging handle. On like a charging handle. <laughs> like, I would I yeah. would like to though cuz I'd like to talk about all the use case instances, but I can do like a 1 minute quick little thing on Instagram or YouTube shorts. And so that's where that's kind of mm. settled down. So it's not kind of come into, we're starting to kind of vary our content and starting to kind of differentiate and separate it, which I think is important. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like a natural maturation same, of the channel. Same with like, we don't even do strictly gunner gear reviews anymore. I True. Mean, you just right. Yeah. Shoot, you know, you probably saw like gel torsos and stuff be shot and some slow-mo stuff, like um, just broaden the, the audience, get, yeah. get more people. Watching. I bought a shotgun. Nice, that. awesome. Yeah, shotguns are. Yeah, shotguns are. Well, I mean, 
President Biden told you, you can have a, a You can have a shotgun. You're just doing what I'm told. As a treat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be, do what I'm yeah, told. You yeah, do yeah you're told. exactly. The president told you, so you're going to have to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with a lot of the newer content, there's kind of like an overarching, like, we have, there's a reason, there's like a reason behind the madness of, of Grantham because the whole goal, of course, is to pull in like a newer, younger audience and to educate these people on guns because like that's kind of the future, right? If we don't have a, a young, um, you know, mm. audience who are growing up on guns, then we're not going to have votes going in the way of, of firearms and it's like a, it's a, it's like a natural right of not, not just like a United States thing where you can bear arms, which is important, but it's actually a human right to be able to, to protect yourself. Right. So it's like, you got to teach them and start young. So a lot of our content is definitely, or some, not a lot of it, but like, um, you know, about, I'd say about half or so is kind of geared towards some of our younger audience. We can start pulling that in. And then once they get in, they can watch some more, more, yeah. Yeah. you know, kind of normal content, that type of thing. But everything's very focused. We're very, um, Deliberate. We de- yeah, deliberate in what we do. Um, like you're, are you kind of talking like it, having some sizzle, but then you got the steak, you know? Yeah, like, sure. Like, hey, example, this is going to get you interested, get you, you know, this is really entertaining, this is cool, but then, like, here's more of, like, a how-to sort exactly. of thing. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the best example we can give of that is, like, e- e- uh, explosive 50 cal rounds versus human, human torsos. Torso. And can't. then if you want to go to the polar <laughs> opposite. Can't not click. Here, right. Here is the, like, oh, now I'm subscribed to Grantham. All of a sudden I'm getting recommended how to stay alive in the mountains or, <laughs> like, re, you know, like. Here's how to fight retake, an insurgency. Yeah, retake a country or something like that. And it's yeah. like, whoa. That's a good skill to have. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's. A lot of this is varied content for all of the audience that we have, yeah. you know, to make it fun for everybody. Because we do believe it should be fun too, right? Yeah. Um, firearms should be obviously being a like really important right to have, and that they're a very serious thing. At the same time, a thing that's sometimes glossed over, and we've talked about a lot, but like guns are also really fun. Buy a Tannerite target. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Put it in a pumpkin or something. Dude. Is like, that, it doesn't have to be training every time you do yeah. it. You is know that what I mean? like is that what young people like really need? Is just do they like what they really like? Is it more of the fun? stuff that they have to see that gets them intrigued. Or, I think so. Like, I'm trying I, to figure out, you I, know, like, what I think is it he has that... A good, yeah. Yeah. What I, is so, it that they want? I think I think you can't treat... <laughs> Every, when you're a kid, you want to be grown up, and when you're grown up, you want to get, be a kid, right? So you can't treat them like kids. I mean, obviously, they want fun content, but I, I've, I've been surprised, at least, by the number of, like, 15 and 16-year-olds hitting us up on our channel being like, hey, I watched that mountain series, and it's so cool, and now I'm hiking, and now my buddies are hiking. Like, they want to... They they just don't know about the channel, right? Because yeah. uh, you know our audience, once everything was set and done, like two years ago, was like ages twenty to thirty five. Your audience is only going to age, so it's like okay, let's go ahead and let's reach out to this younger audience. And they get in, they're like, no, this is cool. You know, I love to learn about gear and about going in the mountains and about guns. And it's like I got here through your fun content, which is what's recommended by YouTube and stuff. But yeah. now I'm learning like more, I don't know, like adult things, you know, I'm learning like serious skills that are important. So it's kind yeah. of like a good mixture. And yeah. and we try to keep it entertaining so that it becomes a normal thing for you. So it's like, oh, guns, like what do, what do you mean? Guns, that's normal. Yeah, you should own guns. And we try not to just shove it down your throat like, did you know that this politician <laughs> is doing this and trying to take away your gun rights and this is happening and, and here's how you should vote? Because a lot of people voice their opinions. Why aren't you uh, bringing light to this bill going on right now? It's like, do you want to hear about that all the time? Mm, like, yeah. how in, how many people are going to click on that and, and just be like, I'm going to keep clicking on these opinion politics pieces? Or are we just going to continue to normalize it to the point where everyone naturally just... Yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, you normalize it, you get people interested, and they go like, oh, I like guns. Actually, you know, these aren't, you know, I mean, obviously they can be dangerous, but if yeah. you use them responsibly, they're yeah. fun and a uh, tool and all this. Like, yeah, yeah I like that. They can then be I'm dangerous. Gonna... Yeah. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, everything fun is usually also dangerous, yeah. potentially. And but it, I feel like, too, there's also, like, your channel can't be everything in one. Because there's yeah. channels where, you know, you go and you're, they're kind of like, every video they post is where they're breaking down a law. Sure. You know what sure. I mean? You have, like, it's Col- like, you have, like, Colin Noir. Colin yeah, Noir, yeah. that's his, like, his, his, his thing, is he delves into these yeah. politics, and he's like, hey, this is what's coming up. You got to keep an eye on us. And guess that. what? He's smarter than us, too, <laughs> he's because a, he's actually he's an a attorney. Lawyer. Yeah, a lawyer. Yeah, I can't compete with So... That. We'll leave that to to Coleon or Arm Scholar or all yeah. those guys. Yeah. All those guys yeah. who do great work, and it's like everybody's got like their piece of the puzzle that they kind of fit into, right? You know, and that's what's always frustrating then to hear like, because like we love uh, Matt uh, from Demo Ranch. Oh yeah, he's like a good buddy of ours, and then people are like, "Oh, we hate Matt because he has never once said anything against a gun law." I'm like. <laughs> 
Matt is is getting like five year olds to watch him shoot things. Like that's yeah. inc- if there's he's doing more for guns than what have you what are you doing for guns? Like everybody has a role. Just yelling at every kid that yeah. walks by your house. You're like. Hey, you five-year-old, did you know that Nancy Pelosi, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> nobody cares. It resonates it's, so well with five-year-olds. If you don't vote on this bill, five-year-old, I can't vote. Well, yeah. everybody falls in their place, right? Everybody falls has their niche that they kind of fill. And it's all going towards the same goal. And the close, the faster everyone can recognize that not everyone has to scream about gun control or everybody has to scream about training all the time or everybody has to scream about it always being fun. The moment we can all realize that it's just a natural flow down a river and that we're all going towards the same thing, mm-hmm. the faster we can all start working together and stop fighting on such dumb crap all the time. Yeah. Man. It's such a, so much effort is wasted on so much stuff when it could just be like, oh, cool, we're all working towards this gun is rights. enjoyable and yeah. fun. Cool and informative. And most importantly, cool. normal. And that's normal. A, yeah. Cool. That's, that's, an that's an what matters. Interesting utopia you just described. <laughs> <laughs> what a great utopia. And then we're going to get people in the comment section, well, Grantham, this bill went through, and then he didn't say anything about it. You know, it, I'm sure it's never ending. And it, it's frustrating, and we, we live in it, so it's it's so much, you know, more real to us because of that. But mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and it's, it's huge, like, Micah, what you do with the, you know, the visual side of things and, and everything that goes into the content <gasps> creation piece, you know, because, like, as interesting as you, of a video as you might be able to put together, if it doesn't look cool, no one's sure. going to watch it. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, that's something that, like, you, it has to go with the, the content nowadays for people to, like, really for it to catch on. Yeah, we're really pushing the envelope all the time as far as quality goes. And I mean, like, it it's really evident. It, I'm not going to name specific channels, but most channels don't, you don't see a gradual change in quality. Usually they find something that works and that's their, that's their formula. Just they keep it. going into it and then, and then they're good. If you go back two years ago when I started, which was the trench shotgun video, first yep, video first that one. we ever, I, that I ever did, um, to now it's not even close. I mean, it is yep. so much nicer. We're constantly investing in, uh, camera gear upgrades. I do so much research, so much training, yeah. so much like yeah. We I every like time my heart <laughs> and soul goes into making these things look good. Every time we buy a camera, we're like, this is the last camera that we need because <laughs> this is yeah. the best. And like we talk about it for like months. We're like be in the car all hyped. We're like, this camera oh, is so good. Yeah, we'll sixteen def- bit raw. Sixteen let's bit go. raw. And then we just spent like another ten grand on a, <laughs> on a camera, a camera literally body, two yeah. days ago. <laughs> Yeah, it never ends, dude. Ooh. It never ends. That's just the way it goes. It is. We're yeah. uh, we're addicted. I do f- I do find that like because I a lot of what I follow nobody who listens to this podcast will be surprised by this but a lot of what I follow is like car stuff and I found yeah. that you know car motorsports and all that they actually have a lot of parallels to the gun world but like the motorsports I find that are like doing the best usually are the ones that are showing it in the most exciting way it in is. the most like yeah. new and edgy way you know so like everybody loves drifting. But it's yeah. like that's because all the FPV drone racer dudes and all that, like they're all following drift cars and sticking GoPros everywhere and doing crazy oh, see, that's stuff. That's cool. Yeah. You know, because and that's like what every what every kid wants to see. Because mm-hmm. they're like, I want to be there. You know. And then it's like some races where they just got the one guy in the infield just following along with one camera. You're like, Yep, eh, I'm not watching. Yeah, that no, yet. thank you. I <laughs> don't. I would not like. That's to watch kind that. of with our new content. We've noticed that uh, retention is based on like if you watch one shot for more than like six seconds, people's attention span is like. Mm-hmm. Cool. Skip, 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 skip. Next. People, like the younger generation and people that are coming up, their attention spans just go lower and lower I and blame, lower blame and TikTok. lower. It's 100% yeah. TikTok, Instagram, you know, all these reels, <laughs> shorts. It's just swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah. And so, man, if you're not, you, now it's just getting to that point where editing is becoming so much tougher. It's, it's like cut, 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 camera it that angle, way. camera angle, drone shot, drone shot, change the angle. It's like, whew, how do you keep up? Seriously. Memes, put in memes. Yeah, a lot memes. of memes. And yet, still though, just fill like, them with memes. Yeah, though. <laughs> when you guys do the reviews, I'm always in it, yeah. watching, uh, watching you just talk on the screen with usually yeah. a black background yep. or something. Yeah, that's, that's old Isn't school. Old school. Did, did, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. Yeah. Well, I, it's hard to say, you know, because YouTube recommends you a video, and you're like, I oh, get, a new I video, it, yeah. and you're like, oh, it's three it years works old. Works in mysterious ways. It does. Yeah, but, the YouTube uh, algorithm. We could talk about that for days. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. Do you have like also offers that come in from various ASMR like things? Like your voice is different. It's just built different. It is a little deep. It's, <laughs> nice. it's just it's I deep. Am, and your I, audio is always like really on point too. So like we put a lot of too, effort so, like, to the audio. A lot of times I'm listening to it and I'm like, we also fine tuned this man's voice and yeah, we fine tuned it. We do. Um, the I've never 
had an offer from an ASMR channel, but uh, people have been like, ah, yes, my Grantham ASMR. Click, click, right, click, click. Right, right. I don't know. It's a good voice. This is my hell. You got to have a good this voice. This is my hell I live in of my own making. That and this Flannel Daddy. Flannel Daddy is the worst thing. Suffering that. from success. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All this success. For, for me, I made it. Dude, yeah. the, the Flannel Daddy is the worst thing that could have happened. I is think. it? I think it's awful. It's not bad. It's just it, when you've heard it so many times, it maybe loses its charm. Yeah. It lost its charm. Yeah. But yeah. people still you're going to break people's hearts by well, saying I would that. say I said it mo- so many times. I said the uh, Steve Arn. Oh, the Steve Arn podcast. Yeah. Being called daddy is usually associated with a different <laughs> yeah. career path. There, there we go. Yeah. Here we go. Do you know Gator? Gator eats his gat? You, yeah, you for <laughs> tell it again. Honk, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. What are we talking about? I just watched uh, that. Yeah. The other guys. The other guys. Oh, the other, yeah. oh, the other guys. It's yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Gator, yeah. Needs you, his, yeah. Gator needs his gap. You were a pimp. No, I wasn't. Are you listening to the story? <laughs> yeah. These girls that needed protection and I would take them on dates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess the, the flannel daddy thing isn't terrible. It, it's, could, be, it's, it could be worse. It could it's, be much worse. Could be it's worse. the community, and they're going to do what they're going to do. So, And honestly, if you're going to go out there and be like, guys, stop calling me flannel daddy, it is going to do one thing. Oh, it is harsh. going to make them. I'm not asking no, you No, it to, is going to make them mm, call you flannel daddy significantly more. I'm not more saying you to, I'm not telling you guys rules. to do anything. That help? Yeah. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. it be. Mm-hmm. We're just going to let it rest. <laughs> what do we call you then? We gotta call you something, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I have a name. His, Damn it. his mama call him Mike. <laughs> I'ma call him. I was crying when you said that. <laughs> Mike. Mike. I'ma hold it down. <laughs> hold it down. <laughs> hold it down. Oh, <laughs> uh, we just talking memes now. I can tell. I gotta. I gotta brush up on my meme game. Yeah, okay. we're it's on the okay. internet a lot. Yeah, it's too much. Are you guys on like? But, but to get the most latest and greatest memes, don't you got to go to like four chans or something? Like, what do you guys? I, I where stay, are you guys? Yeah, we stay away. From I stay that. clear. From yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Reddit. Um, I'm. A, I'm. I'm. I'm I don't on go. Reddit, I don't go on Reddit. I just get my memes. You don't from go to my Reddit. Followers. Yeah, yeah. It's my followers. So there is a. Oh, subreddit. they say you have a supply. You have like a. You have a, a pipeline of memes. The now. memes are fed to me. Wow. A hand fed like grapes. Um, That's kind of, d- you got almost like the Pablo Escobar yeah. of, of like memes. memes. <laughs> they just flow to yeah, me. Yeah, you don't yeah. go to the memes, they yeah, go to you. It's yeah, like they, Coke, but memes. Just like, oh, <laughs> oh, Escobar. Escobar. Uh, there's a subreddit on uh, yeah, Grantham. Yeah, the Grantham. I do go there. Grantham. I come oh, okay. there occasionally. Yeah. It's like the same six people who post every every week. But it's just Grantham memes. But they come yeah. up with some good ones. They, they are some pretty good ones. I do so like Reddit. I think you got a favorite. We should do like a Grantham meme review. That'd be a good video. We, I review memes of myself. That would be oh, good. That yeah. would be good. The I best like one it. was the one where I'm trying to pull the, this was an old one, like three years ago. I was trying to pull that gun out of the holster, out of the safari land. They got stuck. And, then, <gasps> and you were laughing? No, no, no. 1911? No, no, no. I, no, no, no oh. I was pulling it out. Oh, that's a good one, that's too. That's a good one. Uh, are we are we telling the stories? <laughs> I don't know. I'm pulling <laughs> it out, and it's like when you can't pull out, and it's a picture of like Travis Haley, like looking really concerned as I'm trying to like I don't know. It <laughs> cracked me up. No, yeah. the, the the pistol one where the I'm laughing. One, he's trying to rack it by uh, thrusting his arm. Oh, back. Okay. It was uh, Drew Estel from Bear Solutions mm-hmm. and uh, Garrett Schwindel from Cogworks. If you know those guys, um, and uh, they're they're ranger and a and a sf dude and they're big beefy dudes and they're also like five foot one take that drew and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're beefy um and so they're air racking this 2011 and they give it to me i just can't air rack guns for the lot for my life so i was like sitting there for like a minute and there's like a video of me just looking so stupid there's just, a freeze frame and it catches him right here and he's laughing from how many times he's failed but it looks like he's just a menace with like, a gun. Oh, he's like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th- wait, I think i've seen that one yeah yeah, yeah. that's a good one there's some good meme photos that. of you too, the red wagon. Oh yeah, from yeah. way back. Yeah, I used to film. I wanted to be a YouTuber when I was a kid. That was yeah. my dream job, and uh, so we had a VCR camera and we just filmed hours of videos. Those are sick. Yeah, and I'm just sitting there with like an airsoft MP5, and I'm like, my name's Micah. I'm a gun expert. And I pan over. I'm like, this is my ride. It's a red wagon with an M240 strapped to the yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> to be Dang. clear, both him and his friend. Who uh, also Christian, now works who for also us. who I also hired. Yeah. So it's just life is a circle yeah. of YouTube. Mm-hmm. For, for when do these um, when do these video archive videos? Oh, they're, they're out. They're out. They're they're out. Yeah, you, okay. you can search. I haven't seen them. They're oh, they're they're fire. They're there. They're fire. Yeah. There's, didn't He's, you guys do the show? What? No, they're on my Instagram. No, they're on. Yeah, they're, they're on YouTube. They're on, what are your videos? Aren't they? No, they're not on YouTube. Oh, too bad. No, no. 
where are we here? Yeah. I also love the fact that like like what you said, like when I was a kid, like that obviously like wasn't even a thing, but you're like, Oh man, when I was a kid I wanted to be a YouTuber. You know, like I was yeah, like uh, so. like that's my, like a thing now. It's like, oh yeah. I wanna be a fireman, I wanna do this, I wanna be a YouTuber. You yeah. Know? That was when yeah. YouTube was just becoming a legitimate thing. Big thing. But to to your parents saying you wanted to be a YouTuber was like you know, what are you talking about? That's not a real job. You need a real job. I found out the other day at uh, our high school, there's uh, an esports team. That's pretty big. I don't know what that yeah. is. Internet it's sports. Like, wait, uh, wait. Do you not know esports? Competitive video it's gaming. Competitive yeah. gaming. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Like, so I've done you know, like you when you play your buddies online. Right? Okay. Yeah, but this no. was like it's no. like a high school no. team. Oh no, like no, these are, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Coaches, the last time I, I left off on PS4 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Like that's yeah, where I left that's, off. Esports yeah. is maybe just a hey, hey, no hate, but you're cut out of this conversation right now. <laughs> you got no. Mark is in a conversation. <laughs> you were doing about something so good. Internet related, and I'm not. Uh-huh. It's, it's, uh-huh. Why were you at the high school? Is that hey. what they do nowadays with kids? Like your parents have to go to the high school, and your kids are like five. Wait, what? What are we talking about? Are we Mark has really school, young Mark? kids, and, I do. but he's already. You're already having to like no, get we him were ready for the, high school. We were at the bus stop. <clears throat> oh, and then one of the moms at the bus stop has an older son who is on the esports hey, team impressive. at the high school. That's do they impressive. have jerseys? Impressive. I, they Very. usually do, and they compete against other high school. Like it'd be like football or yeah. whatever. Anything. It was like oh, that. Okay. there's usually a small roster of games. The ones that are very competitive, but yeah, Counter Strike. That one, League of Legends, I think, is yeah. a big one. But yeah, yeah. You got to learn this stuff, man, if you want to connect. I still have a two at the front of my age, and I, I'm this far out of it. Yeah, so do I. I'm 27. Right. Yeah, yeah. but you know all this stuff, and I don't. <laughs> I live on the internet. So yeah, yeah. To be clear. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very unhealthy. That's true. Yeah, do you guys ever have to, like, do any just, you know, like, complete, uh, what do they call that, uh, where you... Detox? D- d- yeah, yes. detox or, like, a complete d- sensory deprivation thing where you just don't, d- just don't even look at a computer no, screen we, for, like, a week? I mean, we both have, uh, a lot, most of our hobbies kind of revolve around not being around computers, because, like, it's, you know... Yeah. We're just on it so much. get exhausting. What are your hobbies? Guns. <laughs> <laughs> for both of us guns uh, I mean on my side I love uh, working out um, hiking backpacking um, that's kind of my, my thing yeah uh, skydiving is my big thing yeah. as well so do a lot of that um, it's kind of mountain biking it's kind of excuse odd. me I shouldn't swear yeah. oh, I'm sorry it, it's kind of odd it's uh, another being, word sorry. for a lot guns and videos <laughs> were like before I did them full time as a job were like pretty much everything for me so it's kind of weird because that's what I do, but yeah, probably like mountain biking, backpacking, cars. When I was a mechanic, I was a mechanic for seven years. That kind of kind of killed the car thing for me. When you work on yeah. car, now they're starting to kind of as a job come back up. Yeah. yeah, now I have a truck. I'm gonna do some overlanding and stuff like that. So does the gun stuff ever happen like that for you? Like you ever get like oh. no. 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 No, 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 no. In fact, some days we're like, hey man, we need to just go like not bring cameras and let's just go shoot. We do. And that. Then it's like, oh, yeah. this is fun. Yeah. We do actually do that a fair amount. Fair amount. Yeah, we do that. A fair and even amount. when we film, it's still fun we still have yeah. a good time yeah no. it, it's a beautiful dance i wish you could you know see it because like <laughs> i think i mind this already earlier when i'm like okay mike i'm gonna go like this i'm gonna go do 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 and he's like don't go like this like around you it ends up being the boondock saints scene where yeah he's like there was a, he, he's like dancing <laughs> and he's like there was a firefight yeah so and it's just us on the range so it's i wonder I wonder if anybody has ever just seen us like out there filming. No, it's pretty. It's pretty remote. Somebody maybe us. makes maybe just makes their own YouTube channel spying on Grantham. the Grantham right. YouTube oh channel filming process. I don't know how I'd feel Ugh, that'd that be one. bad. Yeah, that'd be very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd click just on it. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I can always count on Mark for one of those. Oh Lord, um, good, good silence. But yeah, you know, uh, we do have a good time. It, it's it's kind of crazy that this is kind of what we do at this point. Yeah, is we we kind of we go out, we just go out and shoot. And we leave. had more free time until onward became a thing. Yeah. So and with our, it, yeah, yeah. With what's our, going on with that? I talk, it's going awesome. It's going tons, really good. Tons. I wish we could wish we could talk about like almost everything we're doing, mm. but. We it, have, I'm so excited for some of that stuff. Yeah, we have I so, so excited. I know we have so much. I, I don't want to say too much to where everyone's getting like so excited because some stuff's like a little bit out. I'm excited because I've been working on it. We, yeah, we, we yeah, have been working fair. on it. Yeah, but we we have a lot of cool things. I mean, we have our products. We have a lot of prototypes that are um, being developed that should be releasing soon. And then 
uh, the training section getting started up, and that's all tied into to everything. We can say it's neat. Neat. Very, oh, very yeah. neat. Yeah. Very awesome. It'll what be do you, so, like, products and stuff that you guys are developing, mm-hmm. what... Um, Choose like is carefully, the, no, I know, I know. Outside no, no, of, you're good. We can talk about outside of Cordura exists because right now we're doing gear. Yeah, yeah. So everyone knows us for our, like our chest rigs that we yeah. make right now and right our <laughs> our simp. It's like it's, a, it's like, yeah, it's a dangler pouch. Small it's called the simp. Small integrated <laughs> miscellaneous pouch. We also <laughs> have the pimp. We have the pimp, the plump out. integrated miscellaneous pouch. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> we shouldn't be in charge of naming. <laughs> Well, uh, hey, I mean, it are. goes it goes right with the daddy thing, though. I mean, that's just it, like... See, I, I walked into that myself. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have our recce rig, which is uh, kind of our big seller right now. So kind of built around the idea of, um, you know, all these rigs are getting smaller. So we're like, hey, what about carrying as many mags as you could? And yeah. And so it, it's cool. And it's made to, for integration of the pack and everything. I am I love it. I'm We're very well, passionate about it. Yeah. 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 No, it's an awesome rig. Yeah, we love yeah. it. Super comfy. Are you no, just say, saying that because the recce rig is recce in the rig room? Is in the room. room? That that's got to come about though, because I mean, obviously, you guys, you guys, you shoot so much. You have a lot of experience and things, and so I mean, at this point, now that you have the means to do something, where you're like, before I just had to deal with what's out there. Now I actually have the means to maybe go out and you know, we can prototype stuff and do it. I mean, is that that's got to be? It's a good feeling, man. Yeah. Because I mean, we've been using every product under the sun. There's a lot of good ones that we still use, but like, it's it's what's fun to me right now is that like, of all the big companies that. Um, you'd maybe consider a competitor. We're not even really a competitor to anybody yet. We're no. so small. But like, you know, um, as we start coming up, we work awesome with the guys over at Spiritus, right? And we use their products and our stuff all the time. They're very supportive of us. And we market our products with, with their Spiritus stuff. Products. And then same with Faro. Mm-hmm. And you have, so you have like Faro and Spiritus and T-Rex Arms and all these companies that are kind of up and coming, but they're all working together. If you notice, it's not, there's not animosity between them. That's cool. It's, it's That's like cool. A, it's a, it's yes. a good feeling. Like, um, we have videos coming up with Spiritus, and uh, we do stuff with with Fair all the time. We do stuff with Lucas with T Rex Arms, and it's it's cool because it feels less adversarial, more like hey, that common goal, right? The river flowing. Yeah, it's, good. I mean, it's a good feeling, man. Flowing. Most of those like people it. you just named are also pretty pretty passionate with their eye on the prize. Kinda, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean with that two A. But I mean, being I the, it, the peak of it all. And I haven't named all of them. There's many Tons, great people out yeah. there, but like. You know, those are guys that, you know, we spend a lot of time kind of dealing with. I'm like, it's just cool. It, it's cool that they're all like, okay, this, our goal is, you know, civilians training at a high level and coming out the best gear and no bull crap and training and all that kind of stuff. And everyone's just working towards that goal. I just think it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's a really good time for gear and uh, I guess community as a whole and all that kind yeah. of, all, and all that stuff. With the, uh, with the gear you make um, and that you guys develop, do you like... Like you've got the YouTube channel thing, so it's not like you have to make something that uh, uh, has to sell in these giant quantities, and you have to try and make like this whole really big business thing out of it. Like I'm sure you can kind of make it exactly how you want it. Like that's you, a couple of the. That's why he said earlier he was basically like, "Well, don't make them too excited because a couple of them are very like very we want." This. Okay, I was wondering that. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the word? What's 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 the thing we say from the Bible all the time? He was telling me a good name is better having silver and gold. That's it. That's our. That's kind of one of our mottos. We're we not. Stick yeah, to. I, the eye is not. The prize is not silver and gold. It's to make something fun, exciting. Well, now I mean we're trying to make something sick. Yeah. But yeah. Um, ultimately, the the silver and gold is. Man, I wish we could talk secondary. about the products. They're so me there's, too. It's hard to. It's hard anyway, to get just around curious. it. Yeah, it's fine. Don't yeah. yeah. get too excited because like these are things that we just thought would be really cool if we made them. So no, they're cool. They're cool. Stop. We think they are. I don't yeah, know. They're cool, but don't get too excited because they might not be cool. But they're cool. They're sick. Yes. They're sick. <laughs> <laughs> but stop. But they're, <laughs> but they're, <laughs> calm down. Stop calm it. down. Stop. Okay. They're neat. They're right. neat. Very yeah. neat. Yeah. Let's see Paul Allen's company. They're sick. Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> really drove that one into mm-hmm. the ground. But, um, but yeah, it's a good place to be in. We get to now make the products that um, you know we want and everything and then work with guys who already have solutions with their products and use them. And it's just a, it's a real good community right now. Lots nice. of cool people out there. It's always very apparent when like the designers of prod products are like extremely passionate or do end it. users or do it yeah or if they do of, it. and like because when as an end user then you go use that product and you're like and it's got this and that's the actual that's the perfect spot or that's the perfect angle or they thought it, I they like I didn't even realize that that's what I needed 
but that is what I needed right. because it does this. Right. You know, right. like this is the only nice thing I'll say about Vortex the entire time I'm on this podcast. I'm just kidding. But like, think about hitting the throw lever on like a one to ten. Like, how many throw levers have you hit on optics? You're like, oh, and on the one to ten, you're like, what? You're like, sick. Thanks, like guys. somebody who actually shot, like, it's did true. This. Like it just, what? That is. That nice. was an annoyingly <laughs> long part of the product development process for that scope. Actually, I'll just <laughs> yeah, say that. Like how yeah. much tension you need because then it's like then it's other things too. It's like it not floppy. Well, yeah, because then like oh, you got like unnamed LPDOs. You know, as I'm going through, you know, with my pack on through the mountains and it hits because uh, it's hitting against my gear and it's too loose. So it just, I go to bring it up and it's at five power and I'm like, oh Lord, <laughs> like trying to <laughs> make my, trying to make my shot. <laughs> So, Mike, uh, what yeah. what came first? Oh, if I say Mike and then uh, uh it's Mike. Happens uh, all the time. Okay, yeah, right. All the time. All the time. Sorry, all the yeah. time. Um, so Mike. Yeah. What came first for you, being a gun guy or joining the military? Oh, gun guy. Gun guy um, first, dude. My parents hate it. So my parents are. I'm going to say this. My parents are going to disagree. I love my parents, but so they're not really <laughs> into guns that much. Uh, grew up in California. Um, and public, my parents are Republican, but, uh, they're kind of like, everyone can have guns, but just not us. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but what's weird is then, uh, you know, with all that said, you know, my dad grew up shooting, so I grew up shooting with my dad. And then, um, uh, for some reason, I still don't know why I showed it to my mom. She didn't know why, but we had these encyclopedias, those old, um, guides that were like, uh, all the world's small arms are big and thick and they have illustrations and they show all the workings of the guns. So we had like a bunch of those. So it was like SMGs, rifles, machine guns, grenade launchers. So I grew up. Sweet. Yeah, I found that them. I found them. Entertained me for hours oh, when yeah. I was a kid. I found yeah. them in my parents' library when I was like seven. I was like, oh, these are cool. So I spent my childhood reading those, watching History Channel, Tales of the Gun and all that stuff. I was just... For the time I was young, I just loved firearms. And in fact, uh, I found that book just recently because my parents were moving and everything. And I found all my old drawings because, you know, I'd try to, oh, no tra- you know, draw oh, the, yeah. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to design my own gun. It'd just be an MP5. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I grew up like reading through all that. And it's funny because now I read it and uh, it's kind of hard to know now. But with the Internet, like knowledge is just so perba- per- pervasive. But um, you know, when these books were published in the early 90s, there wasn't really anybody. It's kind of harder to fact check, uh, fact check things. So they actually got the FNC and the FAL confused on the pictures. And so now oh, when right. I was reading it, I was like, huh, it's an, it's an FNC, not an FAL. But, you know, of course, back then it could have been harder to recognize in, unless you had yeah. more intimate knowledge and you had time, you know, hands on time. But it's not like it is today where you have people who have so much knowledge and you can, you know, just get it all in. So, but yeah, so I grew up with that. And then, um, you know, once I went off to college, I bought a gun like as soon as I could. I think it was a first gun was a uh, is either an S I think it was an SKS, and then the second gun was a Sig P two two O, like one of those old police trade ins. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I went down the police trade in yeah. route early oh, yeah. on. Who didn't? Uh, and it was good. So and easy to do. It just you just it, fall into it. Yeah, and the SKS. I mean, back in the day, it was like eighty bucks, and it came with a thousand rounds of ammo. So it was just, it was oh, the, gosh, it was a like gold. so days. cool. And then uh, bought a 5.45 AK. And back in the day, 5.45 for 7N6, it was imported in mass quantities. One of the most, you know, mass produced rounds in history. It was like for a tin of 1080, I think it was like 70. 60, it was like 60, yeah. 70 bucks. So you could shoot all day, shoot like a thousand rounds and be like, oh yeah, no dent in my wallet, really, you know? Right. Yeah. It was wonderful. Those days are gone. They are. Thanks Sadly, Obama. they really <laughs> are. Very sad. We don't want to talk about my first gun. But oh, I was just about no, to ask, was, what's your first gun? It was gun? from Counter Strike, wasn't no, it? No, it was worse. It was way worse. Damn, he's been holding out on me. What? It? Oh wow, yeah. it was Springfield it was XD. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you, Springfield. The internet, the internet just likes to uh, beat you down for owning a Springfield XD. That's all. Did, did, did you buy the yours P2000 have a grip zone, though? Huh? Did yours have a grip zone? The grip zone. I don't even know what that is. Oh come on, the grip zone. You must have had a version one. I think I had the very first iteration. You bought a P2000, though, because of Counter-Strike. And then I immediately, I was a huge Counter-Strike nerd on, on the computer. And my, my favorite gun was, we called it the P2K, because P2000. And I internet re- kids would never type out 2000. No. No. P2K. And so I traded it in for like $200 for a P2000. Like, and then the rest of my money went to the P2000. Wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. like a P2000, that's the uh, that's the weird like it's a small USP basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's really cool. Where did it's you a vibe. get? I don't uh, even know. Was that a, a it was at a gun shop uh, downtown Puyallup. Yeah, that might that's like one of the 
sickest guns ever, and I don't know anything about it. I, I think only it was, know it because I, I it played used. it within yeah. COD yeah. a lot. Is your home state Washington? I have, yeah. I've never, I didn't even travel until I started working with Mike. Like, where did yeah. we go the first time? And you're like, oh, you've never been here before? I'm like, Mike, everywhere we've ever gone, I've never been there before. <laughs> I've never been anywhere. Yeah, literally. The <laughs> furthest I've ever traveled was uh, like California. Okay. Which well, yeah, you drove your motorcycle down to California, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay, but, you I mean, that was that was it. So. Right. Where you, where you, my home state's Washington. Where are you from in Washington? Puyallup. Oh, Puyallup. Where are you okay. from? I am from the Bellevue area. Oh, okay. So Ritzy. Ooh. Yeah, he that's why he paused. That's why he paused. Oh, now okay. that's why he's stone glacier. Right. Like, Look at my stone glacier guys. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Private now granted, school. your parents it, it sounded like had a library. Yes, yes. So, so my, that's a also little, one of those. Yeah, yeah so my, my dad was the uh, president well he's retired now, but of the largest keyboard manufacturer in the world. Whoa. So uh, the company boy, made that was kind of a Joey Lawrence. Whoa. Company made all. Let's see, what keyboard do you got back there? Well, let's what, what lift that Apple. keyboard up. Apple. Apple. Uh, yes, yeah, so they worked on Apple keyboards, Microsoft. Uh, they this OEM for everyone. Was Logitech they, a big one? Yes, Logitech was a huge one that they did uh, all of the computer fans, um, and they did mini ball bearings. That was like their their thing. NMB back in the day. So unbelievable. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. He, he was awesome. Very proud of him. <sighs> what kind yeah. of any ball bearings that go into like uh, rollerblades? I got some six oh eight Swiss bones ball bearings I, you uh, know i ceramic i wish as a child i would have paid more attention to my dad and his work but i i didn't but he worked he was originally an aeronautical engineer and then oh wow got, that's yeah, cool got hired on. so he actually designed um part of the dc 10 uh, yeah dc 10 so designed like the fuselage on it that's yeah he's a he's a very smart guy he used to do this is prior to calculators so he'd uh do all the mathematical calculations and the slide rulers where you had to write them down and then you'd i don't even know precisely how they work but apparently it was so intense that at night, he'd do mathematical calculations when he's sleeping, and it'd keep my mom up. That's hilarious. You mean like he would out, like crazy. audibly out loud when he's get- sleeping? Oh, yeah, he's he a very very intelligent man. So uh, he he of course, if you can imagine, yeah, he's like go to school, engineering, doctor, something like that. I did none of that, and you're I do, like, I'm you doing do. YouTube. And so it, it it was a little bit of work. He's proud of me in the military, but now now my my mom will send me videos or a picture he'll uh he'll go and he'll hide away in his room and we'll play my videos and watch him <laughs> he'll like send me commentary now he's really pl- proud of us and everything that we've done but what do your what do your parents say when the when they go down the comment section and they're just like what's happening here? you know you know my mom has wandered into the comment section a, a couple times but she's um she's not of the internet generation to put it put it lightly so She'll, oh, I remember this. Yeah, she'll get in. She'll be like, "Very proud of you, Mikey. Very cool." Well, she'll actually <laughs> yeah. comment. Oh, I yeah. thought, that's amazing. I thought she saw somebody say something negative and was like, "Mike, why is this person talking bad about you?" I, I can't remember if that ever occurred. Mostly, she just kind of ignores it and she just goes, "Very proud of you, Mikey. Very cool," <laughs> or that's something like that. Great. That is like, awesome. And I and I like hide the comment. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> I'm Michael. Like, I'm Michael, no, I'm, I don't want people, you know, trying to follow my mom. <laughs> Oh, that's fair, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Gotta, Cause, cause she, happened to my mom. Yeah. On my Instagram, yeah. she always oh, be no. like, "He he, this looks so funny." And then all of a sudden, some really obscure Instagram account. She'll be like, "Do you know this person?" And the name is like inappropriate. And like, <laughs> mom, mom, no, no, I don't know that person. Well, why are they trying to follow me? I'm like, don't, don't, just, don't. Uh, yeah. How do, do I explain accept. the internet? Yeah, yeah. So can't they? They don't understand. But my dad's really super pumped on. Yeah. The YouTube channel and everything. He loves it. Yeah. Yeah. My dad nice. watches every video. His dad's out. awesome. Every video. Yeah. That's super out. cool. Yeah. He's I, uh, obsessed with YouTube. Yeah. I tried to, so like, you know, I find myself in some of the videos here at Vortex and I, you know, my other brothers have jobs here that can be easily explained by my dad who's in his seventies. And, <laughs> and so he would, <laughs> he would explain to other people sometimes like, yeah, well, you know, my sons, uh, they work here, and, you know, they, uh, one of my sons is an engineer, you know, one heads up product development, the other one, you know, is a heads up sales, and, and Jimmy, uh, uh, he's, he's, um, uh, good at videos. He's, he's keeping busy. <laughs> Jimmy's he's busy. <laughs> Jimmy's on the radio. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he has a podcast, That's which is so like good. the radio. Jimmy's but on you, the radio. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so I, I, I get out of that I works, that. But, yeah. That is pretty funny. Wonderful. His dad's so funny, though, because I always feel like, not judged by him, but it, it's like a very concerned you, you father. You can definitely walk away feeling like a bad person after talking to my dad. Dude, his dad's Ooh. such a good person. Yeah. Like, just a psychotically good person. You talk to him, and you're like, I don't want to swear. 
I don't want to say anything well, bad. Well, he was a pastor and for just like a almost good, like his per- whole life. just a really good person. And like literally, people could like spit in his face. He'd be like, "Do you want me to pray for you?" you what <laughs> He's what do you a need? Good person. And so. he, he, he like anger never enters his his brain. So yeah. So like you I aspire to be that. I aspire. Oh, dude, yeah. all of us. Level. Well, so like he'll talk to me. He'd be like, "Well, tell me about what you and Mike are doing." I'm like, "Well, sir, let me tell you, we are <laughs> we are doing some good things, and we're going to be raising our kids right." And he's like, "That is wonderful." He's, <laughs> I'm like, "Is it wonderful? Tell me, I'm doing good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything's on the up and up. I yeah, swear. everything's great. No, and he, he uh, he's wonderful. We have a we have a really good support network. I would say. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wives are w- wives are awesome. Oh, they're they're on board. Yeah. Yeah. We got the we got the we got all of us. We work very closely together, obviously, because our wives also work for Onward, Onward Research. Research. It sounds like a little bit of nepotism. And our, <laughs> and our kids are like pretty much the same age, not yeah. even a year apart. So yeah, it's all it's gonna, gonna be, be. It's almost gonna be like a like a compound. I feel like Ooh. at a certain Ooh. point, you know. Yeah. This is yeah. this is taking the turn. Do you turn. have a manuscript yeah. yet? <laughs> sounds delightful. The manuscript is everyone gets a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Those kids are gonna be. Uh, yeah. I don't even want to I mean, talk that's, about it. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty compound-ish. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty compound right. uh, To right. be clear, I'm very worried about the kids with the range because it's just like g- giving them free range. It's you like, know hey, they're going to find a rattlesnake and oh, be like, Dad, yeah, check it out. This is sick. Put the snake down. Put the snake Put down. The snake Where down. did you find the Barrett 50 cal? You put that back. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get the code? <laughs> uh, who knows? It's it's good, though, man. Life's, um, I guess life's really good for, for us. I mean, we're yeah. we're having a good time. We're having a good time. We're we are we are happy with our grand thumb experience. That's, <laughs> that's what the that's what the fans need to hear. You know, they want to know they, you're they, happy. They need to assess the mental state of yeah. the not the good. People not they good. Want. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were like, dudes, we're bad. Yeah, like, yeah that would be terrible. People, that like, would be real terrible. Guys, we've been thinking off. about tossing in the towel on grand thumb and yeah. just not not yeah, continuing not, it. Sorry, not guys. Not even close, yeah. man. No, I mean, it's 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 crazy, man. I mean, everything's for ultimately. We do what we think is fun, but like it's for them, right? We got to make fun content, so we we really do spend a lot of time spitballing ideas onto yeah. board. We're like, what's yeah. going to be fun for people to watch? Like, as as a fan, like we want to make sure that I mean, you're dedicating time to us, which is a very valuable resource. So it's like, how do we make sure that your investment in, in us of time is just worth it for you? So we try to make sure we become up with the best content we can. Yeah. The last video was hilarious. Oh, it was, yeah. It was, it was great. Yeah, I mean, I, it I mean, was a good one. You guys are, you're providing like a lot of information, right? But you're entertainers too. But yeah. delivering like, I mean, it in a very entertaining way. Right. Yeah. And uh, like the creativity shows, I mean, you guys are both, you know, funny guys. Like, and I, I can even just like talking with you here, like I can see how your personalities translate into the videos like i feel like you're i can picture the creative process yeah. and it's yeah. very like spitballish and random it and we is. should do this <laughs> and then what about that and then <laughs> let's try clear, this let me get with the camera it's not scripted like oh it's, no it's not that is just kind of us yeah, <laughs> right coming kinda, out yeah. onto camera yeah we just kind of do yeah. it man. i mean we couldn't we couldn't script this time and time again so like best way to do it just natural yeah. Just kinda. There's been times where we've like said something. We're like, that was so funny. I wasn't rolling. Say it again. And then we'll film it. We're like, it's gone. It's gone. We're not doing that. Done. And now, you know, if, if you set it off camera, just, just move on. <laughs> Remember it the way it was. Yes. We, we do keep the camera rolling a, a lot, lot of the time. Yeah. We yeah. try not that's, to miss it. That's, that's smart. Really good stuff. Yeah. That's smart. Because it's just, it it's is, it is know. hard to recreate as you much as you can't. You feel like you're like fake smiling and laughing. Well, because you are, and it's even people can tell when you're genuine, mm-hmm. and it's not worth it. Okay, Mike, a funnest video, excluding XM157, which we did today. That was the, the sickest, sickest. Okay, by bar none. We Last were talking year. about this at lunch. Ooh, this is it. Okay, this is exciting. Oh, uh, that one. Uh, do, I, we, I guess we can talk about that. Yeah, we can talk about. Yeah, that we right can now. talk. XM157 like, is the biggest leap in firearm technology ever. that I, I've seen to, ever since doing YouTube. I have not seen something. So sick, so much fun, such an advancement. Like I, I'm trying to, like, not speak too good on it. But how do you not? It's it such was a force multiplier. So ridiculous. I shouldn't be able to just grab it and be like, <laughs> ding, <laughs> right. on the first shot of picking up a rifle. Like it's it's, it's actually weird. terrifying. Yeah, it's weird. It's actually terrifying because this is probably going to become very, <clears throat> in my mind. You know, commonplace technology in the next 10, 15 years. It's, that's crazy. I can't. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, it, it it's such a 
every weapon becomes so much more like everything that was theoretical with a rifle is not very possible it's like okay five five six can do a thousand but can you really do a thousand yeah. it's like yes if sure. you're in a good stable position you can pull that trigger well you can 100 percent now make a thousand yard shot especially with ar-15s nowadays where they're all sub minute guns you know yeah dude yeah. that's just an ar-15 now give them a six five gas gun 300 winchester magnum give them a 50 cal because these things are rated for 50 it's like oh lord i remember when they first uh when they first started working on that thing i mean obviously like the core technology of it is really what allows them to start plugging in a lot of things and you know it, it they were like hey we got this thing we're working on you know why don't you check it out and they bring it out you know like underneath some cloth and you're like what am i looking at this thing is crazy and they're like, well, it's got X, Y, Z built into it. We have a whole podcast on it, and these guys will have a video on it. You can see, yeah. but you know, basically, you know, it's got this and that built into it. And you're like, oh my gosh, well, if it has, you know, a display inside, like, wouldn't it be cool if you could do this? And like, yeah, it can. Yeah. And you're like, well, dude, like that'd be that's like so cool that you could do guys, guys. But like, maybe someday in like 20 years, it'll be able to do this. And like, actually, it can do this, 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 and this yeah. as well. Dude, it, it just, <sighs> they kept they kept. Like we thought, we finally were like going to close the video out and all this, and then more things. Just, oh yeah, by the way, has the, this feature, and we're like, why? What? By like, the way, you can play Doom on it. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, hopefully soon. Yeah. We're we working want. on the. Yeah, you ever get a knot in your shoulder blade? Because if you press this button, it'll. Yeah, yeah it's like, going to massage. But single handedly, it will tell you. The XM one fifty seven, as far as grand thumb videos goes, it 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 may not be like you know the funniest video we've done, no, yeah. the most yeah. entertaining, but like bar none. The sickest piece of equipment we've ever reviewed. Facts. Uh, it's number, exciting. I think. Like, that is, I. Oh. I would say. I'd say the XM157 sickest. We've. I'd say right below that the M250 from Sig, Sig the, the yeah. new the replacement for the saw. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Um, that one's really exciting. Okay, but what's the funnest? What's the funnest yeah, video yeah, yeah. we've done? The most fun. The most like which video do you film and you're like, yo, that was a good time. Oh man, there's a lot of those though. Oh man. So many years. How am I supposed to just like just last pick year? One just out? last year. Last year. Just last year. Um, I don't know. That tr that shotgun. That video shotgun was video was fun. fun. <laughs> that was a good I one. Know, that was a good it, one. Even just like being there in person and hearing the shotgun, like, just kind of sound like little like wet fart noises when you shoot. Like <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Just like, <laughs> is pretty very satisfying. graphically apparently. Yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> graphically you guys ever like kind of let down though when it doesn't sound like No Country for Old Men? But oh, it's yeah. yeah, like the we yeah the we <laughs> that was probably the most satisfying movie audio I've ever heard is that that suppressed shotgun. No, not even close. What movie audio? You dude, you're getting he, into my realm uh, right now. Hey, back me up here, audio man. Uh, like Django, there are better things. Yeah, yeah see Ryan's over good, there. Yeah, yeah. But Django. That yeah, that's audio. Good, yeah. <gasps> it's juicy. I'll give oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get some juice. Juicy. Juicy. Uh, I don't know. What do you think is the funnest? <laughs> the most, funnest one we mostest did? Mostest funnest. Ooh. See, you put me on the spot. It's I know. Tough. That's a tough one, actually. Um, man, that shotgun one was fun. It was super fun. That was fun. Um, you know, maybe the some of the, the, the fun ones were like uh, the Russian ballistic shield. I think the the Rus the Russian testing we, obscure other country uh, equipment YouTube has really rare and, and tough to get like the Alton that, helmet like the green point, that five point three million views yeah. okay the Alton was fun because it was me you and Sean and so Sean is one of our good buddies that had to go off to do his career thing so he's gone now it sounds like, it sounds like he's dead he's he's just, <laughs> he's, 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 he's working for McDonald's yeah. now literally oh, yeah. oh okay um, climbing the chain. He's doing yeah. a great job, but uh, so he was back, um, like uh, you know, from from work. We hadn't seen him in, like almost a year at that point, and so it was like reconnecting. And then we had this really cool helmet, and we got to shoot it, and he got to be in the video. So it was fun because it was like getting the old a crew. literal pure titanium Russian ballistic. Helmet. And it was like, what's gonna? Because every video we'd seen, they're like, yeah, this thing will stop everything. We're like, there's no way. And you know, we started shooting it, and like the crazy stuff was happening. The audio, just just hearing like. <laughs> Round going off Sparks everywhere You know Round going off To hit Elon Musk's You know Starlink satellites And take them out You know And stop the 5G From going into my brain I'm just kidding Are you kidding No Am I kidding Um I don't know. I I do want to say I think that shotgun video was was so fun. It, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think this really just this last month for us has been a couple it's been a, of bangers. It's been a banger back to back. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a really good time. Love a good banger of a yeah. month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good I want to do the what does it sound like to get shot at with a suppressed weapon. I think Yeah, we're doing that a, one very soon. That'll be a good one. Uh, we shouldn't get that one away cuz we haven't filmed Patented. it yet. Oh, it doesn't Pat matter. Well, yeah, no, it doesn't Pat matter. Yeah, the whole yeah, 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 y
Yeah, we have a man. Dude, we have we have like list. a huge yeah. note notepad just filled. Yeah, so you guys have been going at it for years, but like you don't find. I mean, we've kidded around Mark and I because when we started the podcast four years ago, we were like, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe it'll go a year, and then you know, we might just run out of stuff. And we're no, still here. No, yeah. You know, like you guys, there's, there's no end in sight. There can't be. Well, also content changes, right? Yeah. Because like the videos that we can do now. I'll have to pull them up, honestly, while you talk about this. Yeah, pull it up. There's got to be some. Because like, you know, two years ago, it was like mostly gun reviews. And that was it. Like people wanted to watch gun reviews. But now uh, people really aren't so much into gun reviews. They're more into like conceptual pieces and learning stuff and entertainment. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it, the, the appetite of the fans is going to change oh. and we're going to have to and we're going to cater to that on some of our videos and some of them we're going to do what we want to do but like so that's why things are just going to change yeah. naturally Never so mind. there's a ton on here mike we missed we missed so like many what? like the the muddy tests the freeze tests those were fun the freeze test was terrifying. It was terrifying. The, mo- was- the modern lever actions was a good one. That was oh, a good yeah, one. I remember that. Yeah. One. The cursed Mosin oh. that had the fireball that was like this yeah, big. Yeah, the, the Obrez you mean or yours? Cuz we did the, two Mosins. The Obrez. We we chopped it had, a, had a couple it had an inch of rifling involved, it was a Mosin the Gaunt pistol and the, it just, you could see the round at the end of the barrel yeah it was oh, awesome yeah. and it, it literally had a fireball like the size of this table the fireball <laughs> was <laughs> as high as that tallest tree well, you Cameraman. think I could throw this Mosin the Gaunt over that mountain <laughs> um, yeah it's it's fun to look back to the content and be like yeah we had a really good time yeah. actually never mind you know. do you think that like with the gun reviews and you guys transitioning, you know, you haven't done those uh, a lot in a while. I mean, gun reviews. Yeah, no, I we've mean, done a ton recently. Well, yeah, not as many. It's like not it, like it your has, mainstay. It, it as was much as it every like. video for yeah. like four months in a row, and then it was yeah. like maybe tossing a gear review. That, and now it's kind of like a recce video, mm-hmm. yeah. a ballistic test, a helmet test. Now a gun review. Yep. And then this, but recently we've done like four or five in a row. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. gun reviews. I mean, if we find like a. It, it, sometimes a cool it just enough gun. sometimes it falls into that. Sometimes we've got traveling to do, so it's like you know the schedule kind of dictates sometimes. But how many AR-15s, yeah. by the way, can you review? Well, I was wondering that because I remember like I go on a gun buying spree. I feel like once every couple of years, I just like buy a crap load and then I have to actually like use them, you know. And then, but like <sighs> you can only shoot one there at was, a time. There was a period of time, yeah. There was a period of time where it seemed like you couldn't you couldn't wake up on a given morning and there wasn't a new gun being released. And yeah. I don't know because I ha- I'm in I'm in between gun buying sprees, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. It is 100 right percent still We've, happening. We is did, it? We were just talking about this. Like I will. Here's why I feel bad too, right? Because I see both sides to it, right? A, a small company making uh, an AR will change like a small thing on an AR. Like, hey, the cam pin we change this angle because uh, it leads to smoother operation of the bolt carrier group or something like that. 100% probably true. I, I don't know. I haven't really have a, had a chance to test it. And it's like, that's something I'd like to explore. But at the same time, no one is unfortunately going to care. So yeah. that's where it's like, it, it's hard. And then also you have so many new gun manufacturers. And like, hey, we're making AR-15. It's like, hey, I have no doubt like you guys are making a really good AR-15 and really good parts and you're machining everything. But it's just like, if we, if we do this video, then we have a possibility of tanking um, it's it just tanking because it's just another AR-15. Yeah. There's just not really an appetite for it right now. And that's where it's tough because it's like, well, man, I want to support your small business because I think that's really cool, you know. But sometimes you can't rely on on, on just, you know, entertainers to, to push your business. You know, sometimes yeah. it has to be more organic and growth. And that's kind of yeah. the unfortunate part about it. Like, I... I we shouldn't be we shouldn't be responsible for your business growing you know like that's not what i what i want specifically you know we want to just entertain and 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 show people what's fun like you should what we're making is art right at the core of it if we're having fun then you guys are probably having fun watching it yeah it's it's art from like talking to our buddy foster who who's like a big art guy it's like what's fun about this is we get to help you guys feel the emotions that we feel when we're filming. Yeah. We want you guys to, f- to feel that, whether we do it through colors, through scenery, through seeing what the gun's doing in my hands or, or how we're feeling. Like We want you to be there with Ghost us. Ghost that trigger. Ghost that trigger. It, it, it's, it's stupid, but it, you're there, right? You're there with me, and you're like, I think I can feel that trigger. Or you're there with me, Micah, and Charlie on the range, and we're laughing, and you're laughing because it's fun. And you're like, these are just dudes having fun. I could probably sit down with these guys and have a beer, and guaranteed you probably could, and we'd all have a good time. It's just, unfortunately, there's like a million plus of you, and we can't do it. Yeah. But it's like, we, we want you guys to feel those emotions. That's the kind of the whole point between yeah. behind everything we do. So, like, 
are not not pushing like a product. You know, that's that's never. That's well, we've never also just never pushed a product. Yeah, and except for the Recce Rake so onward research. Oh yeah, buy that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> buy my product. Yeah. Except that for the a... Vortex Five to Twenty Five Optic. My favorite optic. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, real talk. Good, I love good. your optics, yes. guys. I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm, I'm messing with you, but yeah. Yeah. Do, you have the rest, do you have the rest of his lines? I, oh, I, yeah. I oh, God, by the off. way, did he you? just stops in the middle of all. <laughs> okay. The, the screen got cut off. That being said, um, one of the, I think, the most gorgeous videos we have is the, oh, the Huey, the UH2. UH2 video. Anybody watching? That watch is the, the most, and yeah. it's. Of course, your optic. I think that's one of our best videos. It is. Well, it as far as the is. intro, like the colors, just quality. Yeah, it just. I do remember when that one came out. You know, shooting obviously. the optic off a of backhoe, <sighs> off a of backhoe, yeah. just, yeah. just good. It was good. Chef's My shooting guess. was on point. It was good. Hell. That was yeah. Check that was out. a good vid. I enjoyed watching that one a lot. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear how passionate you guys are about, like, it's like, yeah, you're gun guys, and you know, very experienced, tons of knowledge, but like, you know, talking about like the, you know, like. As a as a v- viewer, you take for granted like all the work that's going into those videos. Like you guys mm-hmm. know the back end, you yeah. know the editing, you yeah. know the audio, yeah. you know the yeah. color correction, all the you know like it's a lot of stuff. There's a lot yeah. that goes into it. Yeah. The cutting of the ten million shots together because right. you need well, you ten can, million shots now. You can have all that. You can have the best color correction guy, but Micah also is as obsessed and autistic about guns as I am, which is perfect. It's because a good combo. It's definitely it's a good, it's a good combo, combo because combo. we're able to argue aggressively with each other about guns and we right. do mm-hmm. all the time like if we, when we're doing reviews like the styrog review is probably <laughs> the most we spent probably a full like solid hour like Ta- just heated back going forth, back like, and bro, forth <laughs> no i'm like the trigger isn't that bad <laughs> 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 but like uh it, it helps right because i have uh the last thing that that i want or that micah wants is a, a yes man right i don't want somebody who disagrees with me i and i don't want somebody who just disagrees with me but you want somebody who's who's going to be- let you bounce the idea be like well actually i think you should think of it this way and it's different experience you know i have my military experience micah has ex- his experience from um, just shooting a ton and and doing like a different side of shooting so it's cool it's a lot of fun speaking of different side of, side of shooting airsofting oh yeah i want to talk about that yeah have you guys airsofting? Yeah, you said that you did that and never uh, stop never you never, stop so you do it now I, now i do it you I do love it, it. Now. i love yeah. it dude there's multiple ways to tackle it you can go all in and go to like a uh milson west Mil- milson west do it it's a 40 40, 40 hour long straight. event straight. Like, there's no pauses. There's no lunch breaks. You don't oh, get to call your mom. And everything. You basically get, you know, quote, deployed into the environment with your faction. There's literally a leadership structure, radios, comms. There's everything you can do versus like, you know, there's the Rust Force side, the NATO side, the militia side. There's objectives. You have maps. You have, I mean, it's night vision thermals like it, ir it, devices it felt oh my just, gosh it felt like a military exercise but everyone was fun and no one was forced to be and there yeah everyone was happy <laughs> everyone was actually so, happy to be there it was, it was what, really, a, what a concept it was really fun there's actually a ton of vets there um and so a lot of the squad leaders and and actually leaders, all of them they were all yeah yeah That's a former rangers for them, special yeah. operations so like i just it for me coming i had just retired out of the military like a few weeks before so i was a little kind of it, it's tough leaving your military career and so Going into that was really nice for me because it was like I kind of felt like I was at home. I got to talk with other guys who had just gotten out of the military, and it was like, it's nice. Yeah, you guys, yeah. But you, guys not have, a, you guys have a shoe house. We do. Yeah, you, guys have like, you guys just go airsoft, airsoft in, there. in it. Shoot each we, other. We actually have. We have. We there do that is. on occasion. Yeah, all the fun. display guns in the showroom you may have seen are all Crytek guns. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, so, let's, let's so go. When, <laughs> when, the showroom, <laughs> when the showroom is closed. Right, let's wrap it up. So when this podcast yeah. is uh, done, we're going to... Right. Yeah. I um, shot Jim in the hand. <laughs> no, you shot... That wasn't an airsoft gun. That well, was, that was a UTM. Gun. Yeah. A UTM gun. He didn't <sighs> shot me in the hand with that Ouch. and in the kneecap. Do you, have a, do you have a scar from it? No. I mean, I was wearing a glove. I got a lot of scars and random crap in my hand, so I couldn't point it out. I think it was right Are on the You doing, like, punching people a bunch? Um, I, when I do that, I have gloves on. But no, I just reach aimlessly into engine bays. and <laughs> oh, <laughs> You know how that yeah, works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I used to have a knuckle. Now I don't. Yeah. You just, um, like, break me. Right. Flashbacks to Flashbacks. being a mechanic for six years. Yeah. Throw a wrench into the Sorry. wall. Come back to us. Come right. back. Uh, but so uh, the the Milsom West though. Yeah. Said, back like, to that. But like that doesn't. Okay. To me, as an outsider, 
It doesn't sound like, oh, I'm going to try Airsoft. I'm going to sign up for the Milsim West. No, one. no, do indoor Airsoft. Go play with your buddies and all that first. See what it, you know, learn how the guns work. Because there's a little learning curve to them. There's hop up and they might have corks you need to work around. So they're not that reliable, but you can build them up pretty good. Um, but Milsim West is less so an Airsoft experience as it is Milsim. a military simulation. It's the, the Airsoft, I would say, is not even 50% of the experience. For Milsim, yeah, it was mostly like it was fun because I got to got to take you guys on squad movements yeah. and teach you movement techniques, exactly. and you move under night it's vision, cool. and we're doing raids it's under night vision. Cool. It, 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 yeah, it, it taught you a lot of really important things because you spend. You so, also have a video on that. You guys should check that. Yeah, one we do. Out. Um, you spend so much of your military career like, okay, uh, you know, you're going into your observation point or you're, you're set up a patrol base. Like, how do you do that? And it's like. Weeks and weeks and weeks, and it's tough because you're tired and you're getting smoked and you're getting yelled at. It was fun to teach it um, to civilian side because it was like it was a more relaxed environment, which it was just nice. You know, it was it was fun to be able to teach them like this really important you know skill, and then they got to learn it in kind of a fun environment and practice it, and it actually worked out really well. It was a really good learning for everyone. Yeah, like Mike yeah. got a ton of time under night vision. He'd already had I'd some never, time. Like like maybe. Like I could count the hours on my hands, how much time under night vision. So like, and then twelve straight hours. And then basically it was like, <laughs> all right, pop some Excedrin because you probably didn't set your helmet up right, and you're gonna get a headache. You know, like, hundred percent. And man. so there I am, just like walking through the forest, bumping into my buddies, and I'm like trying to figure out how far they are, you know, because <laughs> yeah. the depth perception's gone and stuff. Well, I was wondering what that'd be like for the guys who are there that are vets, and then you have you know the civilian side just coming in. You're all just mashed up. You're there together. Like how much of that is is setting the expectations or resetting the expectations? Where like, I mean, I don't I don't even know what it would be like to you know I haven't been in that type of environment before. But like, do you have a lot of civilians who come in? They're like, dude, we're just gonna come in and just f everything up. And then the, the vets are like, actually, there's like a we, we gotta slow down. Yeah, kind of. Shot. Usually, usually it comes down to the leadership. Yeah. Who really, whichever side has better leadership usually wins. Hmm to be honest with you. Because like I said, the airsoft actual combat, like how good you are at shooting an airsoft gun at someone yeah. else is like not what's going to win Milsom West. 100%. It's 100% the leadership. Where are you, that, those guys going? Where are these guys going? Are you going to hold this? And then when they fall back, you assault them. And it's like the leadership wins the game pretty much. So cool. if, yeah, that at least in my experience. I mean, I've only done, done one bill so, yeah. so much, so I don't know. I had a good time. Though. And sometimes the numbers, if there's like 60 more people on one side, yeah. you know, like 260 versus 200. I, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, it, it's airsoft, but right? It's so it, it's, yeah, it's, it's airsoft. just airsoft, so it's 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 just fun. But there's a lot to be gleaned in the in in uh, movement techniques, um, because no matter, it's getting spotted, obviously, with airsoft, and t- someone sees you, you know, 900 yards out in the field, they can't shoot you. Yeah. But it's still, like, good to learn those movement in techniques. In your brain, it, you know, I just got spotted. I just, I'm just I dead. just spotted that guy. In real life, I wouldn't be in this open field where they could shoot me from 400 meters away. Yeah, we got to observe with night vision and thermals, and you get to look out there and be like, I see that guy at 800, I'd be able to t- start taking shots at him, right? Mm. Well, DMR, okay, right. Or DMR yeah. could. So, obviously, there's a lot to be gleaned. But at the same time, you know what? Once again, like we talked about with guns, it's okay to have fun. Yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> it's it? okay to have fun. Isn't it? <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I mean, talking to you guys, I never, I've never, watched the channel before, but never got to meet you guys before. It's, but you it's guys are very fun. underwhelming. You guys, no, you guys are, <laughs> well, the thing is, is that it's, I'm not shocked by what you guys are like in real life. You yeah. guys are fun dudes right. in real life. I, I, it's not like all of a sudden, oh, not what I was expecting. But I think that, you know, I, that that is something that I feel the gun world needs. It's like down to earth, relatable people who are fun. And yeah, they totally get that guns can be fun. I think there's a lot of people like that right there now. Is. I think yeah. it's I think it's a good, it's a good environment. Group. It's yeah. a good it's a good group yeah. of people out there. It's, a, right it's, it's like good, serious, but you don't take yourself too serious, you know, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a lot less seriousness going around, which yeah, is if good. You stay it's, out of the comments, then the gun industry is a great That's place the to thing. Be. It's the internet. You do have yeah. to stay it's, it's the internet. Nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. It's fine. Make your content, have fun. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't even worry about it. The uh, the 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 comment section never ceases to be uh, never ceases. Oh, to dude, be I love it. People get so heated. They do. Yeah, I'm like, you probably just have sex and you chill out. <laughs> oh, that's actually not okay to say. That is okay. That's, I'm just saying. I if, think that's just good advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe just focus wrong? on your wife and just kind of chill, dude. You know, maybe. Sp- 
spend a little bit more time there on things that are important rather than arguing with somebody on the internet who has an anime profile picture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that guy's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong. <laughs> he's, he, to be clear, he's wrong because he doesn't know. Hence, don't argue with him. <laughs> Nothing to be gleaned. Yeah, that's truth. That is the truth. That is that is th- a lot of truth. Lot that of is truth. the truth. That is the truth from Grantham. Don't right. worry about the comment section. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the comment right, section is here. the comment section is. Is a, I find it to be a good and bad place, though. It's, it's mostly, fun. Mostly good. It's, it's, it's mostly, mostly good. Yeah, good. But yeah. like, you, have you ever heard the uh, the the phrase like, you could have a boss, and uh, one bad compliment yep. will shatter like one thousand yep. good compliments, and now you have a bad boss. It's Even true. though yep. all he's ever done is praise you, but that one time that's he was me. wrong when he <laughs> yelled at you, that's your boss. Yep. You know, true. It's sort of like you read like six hundred good compliments back to back, and then there's that one guy who just ruins it and that's the one you're gonna dwell on. yeah you remember I, that one yeah i do remember when i first started putting up videos like <clears throat> the first like mean comments i got like the first mean one i read it like hurt so bad it totally because well, like, people say like that very personally vile oh, things it's like bad. they do there, there's not there's no way you'd ever say these types of things to people. like i would never like look at you and be like you know what i think you're kind of you look stupid you'd be like what like <laughs> if somebody came up to you and actually was like i think your forehead looks stupid you'd be like this is like, like you, you wouldn't. Like, is this a real interaction? Because nobody yeah. would say that. But on the internet, that's fair. Your your face is fair game, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> Prepare to get roasted, and it's just so anti what the real world is. Like it, it, it's in no way is internet commentary at all like a normal human interaction. So I've always said it, and I'll I'll say it again. But like our gorilla brains just cannot handle the internet it is no. just literally too much and the internet i think ultimately will be the downfall of civilization but until then we're gonna have fun yeah high five have yeah. fun but yeah i think it's really bad for <laughs> i think the internet is actually really bad for for humankind as a, as a whole i just don't believe that we're capable without the the human interaction without seeing the nuanced facial features the way we're acting when we're talking to one another without that there's too much inference of what that person's meaning is and it just creates um, amb- ambigu- uh, ambiguity, like yeah, ambiguity. I don't know why I couldn't say it. I was having a stroke, but right. Yeah. But all we keep getting is more internet, and all I keep seeing is that the world is just a better and better place every single day <laughs> I wake up. Right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe it's we so can, great. It's so the the world is just doing going so down. Maybe. Inflation is going down. Oh, oh, everything's yeah. good. Yeah, guys. despite everything, everything's fine. What's I that, wouldn't even. What's that mean? Worry about I'm it. in danger. I'm in danger. Everything's on fire. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah just yeah. smiling in the middle. <laughs> maybe we could have a little bit less internet as <laughs> a treat. treat. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I love it. I, I love like it. That. And I also love the fact that the internet is, you know, it's a dark, dark, horrible place. We're about to release this on the internet. I was going to say, and with that being said, we have a video coming out this Sunday on the <laughs> internet. Check, Check it out. out. Check it out. <laughs> There's going to be comments. You should like, read them. In the meantime, we're just going to enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, to be clear, our internet uh, content is okay. You're allowed to watch that, but no <laughs> oh, others. No uh, others. Uh, everything else is off uh, limits. Uh, what I like about that, too, is it really narrows it down for me. Yeah, you don't have so, to worry about it. Just uh, clutter out there. Fall, there, fall so. into the warm embrace of Grantham. Yeah. Take what we have to say as gospel. As, as gospel. gospel. <laughs> hey, you are yeah. not him, buddy. You, you are, are not, not that guy. You pal. are not that guy, pal. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love it. We didn't even get too deep into like your military background. Oh, sure. We can, like we can that. talk about it, dude. I don't know. I feel like we're yeah. closing. I feel. I feel no, like no, we're no. closing. His it out, military. Then... No, his military stuff's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, sure. I've, I'm. I've always been intrigued by it. Sure. Mostly maybe. because I probably didn't. The, you two didn't serve me up the right video. Maybe that explained it. You know, where you see like the you thumbnail. You should write like, a letter to the What's algorithm. What's Grantham's real backstory? Yeah, something like that. I, I get it all the time. Well, so the reason that I never really delved into it is because I. I never. This is gonna sound weird when I say it. Maybe people will be like, ah, screw you, Grantham. Um, I didn't. I didn't join the military to like gain fame off of it. If that makes sense, everyone's like, well, screw you, you did. Because um, obviously, I gained a lot of knowledge from from serving in the armed forces. But like, I, I never wanted to be like, hey, I am X Y Z. Therefore, you should listen to me on the subject. Mm-hmm. I just wanted you to watch a video and have fun, you know, and be like, oh, that's cool. He's got some good ideas and some good information, and, and kind of take it to heart. So I never really wanted to make a video where. I was like, hey, I'm Grantham and I am XYZ. And that was also kind of like a public affairs thing with the military as well. Where they're like, hey, don't re- don't like, you never, <sighs> doing doing social media and being active duty was, was very, um, not touch and go, but it, it, you kind of definitely had to kind of walk a, walk a line. Oh, yeah. Right? I couldn't at any point say, hey, 
this is where it would have gotten complex. So if I'm like, hey, my name is Grantham, I'm a seer specialist, I'm a TACP, and uh, you know, here's this product review or something like that, that can imply affiliation between the United mm-hmm. States government and XYZ and, and that type of stuff. So you, you never wanted to do that. So I just kind of strayed away from it as a whole. Now that I'm out, obviously it's way easier because I can talk about my... Ex- not that I, I did anything like amazing or anything. I had a it fun... It was all cr- fun though. I everything, had, I had all a great your career. stories and yeah. everything is is really fun. The survival I, yeah, field that you've told me often <laughs> blows my mind. Like, why did you not just stop? It was a, it was a really good like, time. At yeah. certain points, like when he's eating the bananas, what was it, banana, banana slugs? slugs. So why didn't you just stop? Because you can't fail. You can eat a banana slug. You can, as a treat. <laughs> what a treat. As a treat. Okay. So I licked a banana slug one time. Did you? Yeah. Did it uh, excrete that little stuff that hardens your saliva? Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Imagine eating it and then it like squirts it all in your mouth and your saliva hardens and it's bad. Sounds t- it's bad. terrible. But yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the military career. Yeah. So um, started in 2010 in the Navy. I still got a banana slug in my head. Yeah. So I started in 2010 in the Navy uh, reserves when I was in the medical school. Um, 2012, 2013-ish, I left uh, medical school and tried out uh, in the Air Force uh, for a SEER specialist. Uh, made it through all all that stuff and became a SEER specialist in the military. So that uh, is teaching survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. So that full spectrum. So we taught it to at-risk DOD members, so that's everybody within the DOD. Uh, it was awesome. You spend most of your kind of early career um, doing, like, teaching, like, the field survival, so mostly the the C, survival and evasion, and then the resistance and, and escape stuff is, is kind of a different side. Mm. Um, so I spent a lot of time doing that. was an uh, instructor there, obviously, um, became an instructor, instructor, and then uh, then uh, worked did a little bit of work in Standyval. Um, at the same time, I was also an emergency parachuting instructor as well with the military. So that's that's a part of SEER. So that was fun because you got to you got to essentially instruct all of the air crew on how to use their emergency parachutes or jump them and stuff. So just got to jump a bunch, got to go out in the woods and, and hike around and teach people survival. Oh, uh, yeah. there, there was never a job that was quite like it because it's. Uh, you know, you're, you're given a pack and uh, there'd be like a, if you needed it, like a resource drop, like food or something, but otherwise you got a pack, you had like between four and 12 people and you're like, all right, let's go, let's go learn. And you just go out for a week. And that was during the summer during winter is a little bit more confined, but yeah, you just got them and you just got to go. And, and it was super fun because you, you have a curriculum of course that you teach off of, but um, there's a lot of freedom. It's like, where do we go? Wherever I want. <laughs> so you have this whole training area up there in the Cusick area of like um, Northeastern Washington. And you can just uh, take them on some crazy route, you know, and depending on how fit they are, you know, uh, whether we had special warfare guys, in which case we just smoke them and tank them up mountains, or, or whether you have like a, a fairly unfit air crew or something like that. Air crew guys are like, screw you, we're fit. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, and you can take them around and we just, uh, and they got to break past their own barriers, you know, hike and, and break down mentally and then learn from it and continue to go. And the whole time you're teaching them survival and, and then eventually you kind of get to let the reins off, you know, you teach them that evasion and then eventually you're like, hey, letting you go, you're going to get hunted now and then they get to yeah do you, it's so cool man it was such a good such a good job and like i think back to it often because it was just so simple and you know when i was doing it they're always like you know there's nothing like being what we call the pack carrier right there's nothing like being a pack carrier because you just you know you just have the pack and you go and you just get so much experience doing that and at the same time you're doing all these um great courses when you're not out in the woods and just learning some really interesting subject matter, hmm. um, taking some really great courses like uh, sock pee or, or a couple of things that, that we, a couple other things, and, and <laughs> it, it was it was really cool. Um, Would you say that career path is the most applicable to civilians? Um, I mean, I think a lot of them are. Just like, survival. I mean, I feel like survival. I don't know, like, like if much, like, what, how much, like, army, like, uh, movement and this and that, like, big reinforcement, I don't know. I think it depends, right? It, it, from, a, from a non-military guy, because I don't know uh, anything, I, you know? I don't, I mean, it's hard to say, man, because yeah. I never I never did any of the other jobs in, I guess in the military. Mm, and yeah. I was never in the mm-hmm. army, so. Um, so, yeah, so, um, did that in the Air Force, and then um, 2017 assessed for uh, TACP officer, um, became a TACP officer, went through the pipeline, got out, uh, served as TACP officer, and then um, in uh, 2017, when I was still a SEER guy jumping, I had a bad jump and uh, had uh, caused a pretty severe injury to my neck, and uh, eventually that ended up getting me uh, medically retired out of the military. So really? That occurred in 2022. So got med retired uh, a couple months ago now, and so now wow. just uh, doing this whole thing full-time now out of the military. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. So I, I had a great time in my career and uh, just had a lot of fun. The You're going to get no regrets. Tattoo. No regrets. Uh, no, <laughs> definitely no regrets. Uh, I'm really happy to have 
to have done it and everything. Um, now that I'm out, I'm getting a lot of help as far as getting the the whole neck thing kind of fully solved up. Had some pretty severe issues about about a year and a half ago is when it got really bad. Um, really, yeah. full body paralysis. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was left side. It was, it was losing a lot of the sensation, feeling, and movement on left side and stuff. It was pretty bad. It was pretty scary to be honest. But it's um it's it's getting taken care of now. Some pretty awesome doctors. Actually, one of the doctors is a fan and oh, uh, cool. was one of the original guys. Can identify what the problem was. So big thank you to Orlando. He's he rocks. Heck so, yeah. Um yeah. So uh, that's the career in a nutshell. So did a lot of stuff. TACP was obviously really awesome. Yeah. That's a really cool career field and. Learned a lot of, a lot of, met a lot of really uh, quirky, goofy dudes out there. Yeah. It was, it was fun, man. What's, so. uh, what's that, like, kind of, what's that specific job in Ta- a nutshell? W- what do they do? Yeah. Um, so, TACP, uh, what's the best way to describe it? I mean, um, most TACPs go on to get their JTAC qual. Um, so, it's uh, essentially your advice. Uh, advise assist control so you're advising the military this usually the army on uh, air force capabilities you're going to assist them with everything they need to request aircraft do that type of stuff and then when you have your jtac qual then of course you can call in airstrikes whether that be from um, a talk and a, and a kind of remote control or whether you're on the ground with a team calling in airstrikes watching the a-10s come in strafe people or Brr. drop bomb or dropping bombs mm. blowing stuff up and so met some real mountains of men you know doing that job and uh, that was that was super cool so, yeah, you know, by the time I joined, the, the GWAT had pretty much kind of di- died off because I finished the schoolhouse like 2019. So things oh. were kind of chilling out for TACPs, but around that time, there's still guys out there doing awesome work. But, yeah, so got to meet some really cool guys who did some really cool stuff like uh, Matt from Warm Fuzzy and stuff and just some crazy dudes. And, uh, yeah, it was cool. Really cool career field. Got to, got to have a lot of fun, do a lot of comms, do a lot of uh, watch some planes come in and blow stuff up. It was a hard life. Can't beat that. It was it, it was not a hard life at all. Yeah, it's got to be fun to go like, click, click. Not quite, but very close. <laughs> yeah. Is it like Call of Duty where you just kind of... Yeah. Well, you got to yeah. get a kill streak well, first. Yeah, yeah you got to get a kill so streak. Mike and then clearly had a lot of kill streaks. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Have you turned the tactical nuke? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it goes. And then you just kind of throw a, go go like this with a laser and it just knows what to do. You, you open up a laptop that just comes out of your back pocket. Yeah, yeah, the back pocket. Oh, no, you're and confusing and then it. That's and a heartbeat sensor. Yeah, that's a heartbeat sensor. And then it, and <laughs> no, then it goes, bad, into, goes into the pilot's view and then I control the pilot's body for him to drop the bomb. Yeah, it was cool. So that was... The, uh, that was the old Air Force career. That's, That's good awesome, to know. Man. Yeah. That's super cool. It was fun. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of valuable skills, especially for a lot of the stuff we're about to start teaching over at Onward Research. It's funny watching Ooh. me go like, military, like, I don't want to learn anything military. Just teach civilian stuff. He's <laughs> like, listen, this is where experience comes from. Yeah. And I'm like, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. It's it's fun. We're uh, we're uh, we got a bunch of, a couple different guys from 27 and 375. We're about to start hiring on some some instructors as well. Those classes are going to be fun. Yeah, they're going to be a lot of fun. It's well, gonna be good. Or not fun. People or not fun because they're just going to smoke you and yell at you, you. Yeah. belittle you. People are probably thinking they're coming to have a good time, but really they're like, oh, I have to learn really hard things. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, so the, the unfortunate part about doing like patrolling or, su- or survival is that it's not always specifically fun. It is a, it, it's a good experience. It's a good experience. Yeah. It's, uh, it betters your it life. Sounds like you would uh, grow as a person afterwards. You do. Um, yeah. I haven't even taken any of that stuff. There's, yet, there's so much so stuff I, I want to talk about. Well, like, that's we, what I was going to ask. We could do an entire video on survival. I know. Oh, easy. Yeah. Because we went up to, to the north, uh, the Arctic Circle, to do a bunch of our training and stuff. And it was like negative 70, negative 80. It was cold. And it, you learn a lot of cool stuff. And then we. we the cool thing about being a seer guy is you learn to live in every biome in the world. Do you? Yeah, yeah. So in every, you have to be able to teach somebody to survive in any biome anywhere in the world. That is yeah. So wild, you get to so man. part of the training. That's what I'm saying. This stuff is super fun. So to like the to. the yeah. year, the year year and a half you spend training up and earning your beret um, to become a seer specialist like is. You're, you're surviving in every biome from the coastal to the open ocean to the desert to the tropics to, to everywhere to every biome you you learn you learn it primitive and it's super cool and then once you become a seer guy then you're doing more primitive courses and, and you're just learning everything you learn anything from the advanced stuff um you know that are kind of it's kind of more governmental in nature to to like really primitive stuff like we'd go to primitive um like uh what do they call them like the powwows where you like you learn like how to make a bow how to smoke the wood and everything you learn all that stuff and you 
and and being a sir guy you get to you know uh not poach animals because we're given permission but you you get to snare animals and kill them like in primitive ways and, and it's just you're just allowed to do so much when you're a survival guy it's just living yeah looking yeah. back i'm like oh my god we could do everything like they were like hey if you have a bow that you made you can hunt whatever you want whenever and so, like, guys would just make bows, and they had they, but it has to it has to all be primitive. So they'd get like the feathers, and they'd they'd fletch all the arrows and stuff. It was so cool, dude. Wow, it was that such is a, so cool. It is such a cool career film. There's still guys in it doing it now. It's a little bit different now. It's kind of changed a little bit, but so I couldn't speak too much to that. I can only speak to, you know, my time period of doing it. But uh, so that there, that sounds awesome. I'm just so like you were, like you said, you were a big gun guy before you got in the military. Yeah. And then going into that field, it doesn't seem to me like there are other fields where you're going to get to be toting around a bunch of guns and shooting yeah, them a lot yeah. all the time, right? So, like, how'd that happen? Dude, uh, what's the best way? It's, but it, it was just interesting, right? It, it's I'll just, say. when you, when going into the military, the only reason I wanted to do, join the military is to do something that, like, I couldn't do in the civilian world. And it's like, where can I teach survival? Like, it's such an interesting skill to have. Um, and then, uh, you know, I went to, went to TACP, which is a much more, uh, you know, kinetic environment after that, which was really awesome and right. learned a lot of that really interesting stuff afterwards. But, like, I really wanted to kind of get it all, get a big old get big yeah. old thing of knowledge and kind of scoop it on. Big so, old scoop. Um, so cool. Uh, <laughs> I dig it. So, so, many, so many different survival stories. So much yeah, fun. yeah. So that's like I, you said. I that's a so whole many, episode. Yeah, what's that the is, uh, what's the hardest uh, toughest biome to Arctic? Arctic by far. Just cold. Well, I, so there's two there's two parts to that because the desert's horrible. Oh, so yeah. when we when we did the desert, it had to be made way ter- more terrible than it really was, right? So, well, so when we got there when we got out to the dunes. They're like, all right, everybody, take out your water and upend it. So we had to dump all no. our water, and they're like. I mean, Micah would have been fine. He does yeah, yeah, water just anyway. Walk to the like, give me a straw. Like, yeah. All right, for 72 hours, you guys are getting no more water. So Not cool, dude. Yeah, so you are out of water, going into the, into the dunes now. Your story is making me thirsty. Yeah, yeah we're going to yeah, yeah, well, let me tell you. This is all I've been, they, I've been influenced. Oh, I blacked out. Next thing I know, I was going to the Going to the dunes and do it. And so it... it it really sucked. Looking back, it really living through it, it really sucked. But it was really valuable because I got firsthand experience on dehydration in the in the desert. So like we were working the entire time that we we're doing it too, like building shelters and trying to survive and that type of stuff, and putting up um, you know coverings because you get blistered so fast, and making clothing and stuff. And so you know if I hadn't gone through that when I was teaching survival, I would have said what everyone says, which is how many days can you go without water? What are you asking yeah, me? Yeah, no. it's blo- yeah. How many how many days can you go without water? Who does anybody how many know? Days? Yeah. Without with no water, how many days can you go? You know, people always clue. say what, it. two, okay, two what, days or something. What, what does everyone say? I think they say two days. They say three. It's two or three. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a th- it's the rules of three is, is what I've always heard prior to actually doing it. Three days without water, three weeks without food. Right. Done it all. Yeah. So, I'll tell you that after one day without water, about twenty hours, everything is cramping so bad, the muscles are no longer working. So, like, I remember at one point I uh, was like pulling on a rope, and then I couldn't unclench my fist because I didn't have any water to for the muscles to work. So I actually had to peel it, and then I had to push it into the ground to open it, and then it got stuck open. And like, uh, I remember falling asleep in my shelter, and the wind was blowing over the dunes, you know. So I I woke up because my hand was getting covered with with sand because it was blowing right. So I lifted my hand out of the sand and I went back to sleep and then the sand had covered my arm the next time I woke up because you I realized just, it wasn't sand it was your skin <laughs> no no oh. um <laughs> and then this was like you know 30 hours in and then so I lifted that out and the next time I woke up I was choking on sand because it got into my nostrils because it had buried me up to my nostrils and I pulled myself out I was like oh this is annoying I'm like oh this is how people die <laughs> they just they, <laughs> their bodies stop working they just get buried in the sand and they suffocate and they die yeah and so it, it was really good because then when I taught people survival I said hey they say three days, but I can tell you that if you don't have water secured within 20 hours of hitting the ground and you are going dry, you are not going to be functional. Yeah. There is going to be a point in your survival experience with no water 20 hours in where you're not going to have the energy to get water and then you will die and it will take another two days for you to die, but you will die and That's- you won't be able to get water. So when we say your first priority needs to be getting water, I'm serious that you need to find that water or else you will be non-functional within a day. That's where that kind of experience yeah. is important. Yeah, 100%. and you can't. Yeah, you, you, you like a textbook 
maybe can say what you just said, but when you actually see somebody and they're looking you in the eyes like, yeah. you're going to be effed if you don't You do. are dead. Because I've done this. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, people, maybe you could be slightly functional and crawl over to water, but like, you got to get that water, man. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah it's learning. like three days, but like the two days are hopefully somebody finds you. So I would say desert is, is really bad, but the Arctic was a whole nother level, dude, because like, things froze that I didn't think could freeze, you know? Like, everything froze. It was so cold. <laughs> um, well, because, I'm, you know, they dropped us off, and it was just, uh, I have pictures on my phone, but it's just, like, it was up near, uh, I think, Dead Horse, I believe is the name. Oh, sure, so yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's, it's out there, dude. It's January. It's remote. And uh, it's just, you know, uh, you know, hills. And so, like, it's cool, though, because you learn primitive. You learn how to build an igloo. You know, learn how to build, like, a fighting trench, and you live in them and stuff, and, like, it's just uh, we had those big old mucklucks on, you know, and the big old like bunny boots that you have to 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 keep your feet off the the ice and stuff. But I mean, even still, like your feet would get so cold, and it was like, well, how do we warm up? It's like, well, it's a combat environment, no fires. And I was like, okay, well, there's nothing to burn anyway. And it's like, <laughs> okay, what do you do? It's like walk, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you don't want to walk too fast because then you sweat and the sweat, sweat freezes, freezes you, and then you die. And then if you don't walk, then you don't move enough, then you die. And then so it's like you just like this slow walk. I'm gonna carving out snow to making the igloo now i'm walking very slow and then it was just crazy dude and then and then like your judgment of distance is so messed up they're like how far is that mountain right there and i'm like uh i don't know like a mile they're like cool let's walk to it then i was like oh this is a trick it was like five miles because <laughs> <laughs> it's just all white you know it's just a sheet of white up to the top i'm like i don't know how freaking far this is leave me alone i'm just i'm he's just a boy <laughs> <laughs> um but it was cool because we got up to the top of that mountain they're like well how far is the other mountain we're like we have no idea so we had these little pen rock and they're like, we'll fire them at the rockets. So we were firing these little pen rockets at like the mountain. There's some good <laughs> memories. <laughs> That's Dude, that was, but yeah, so I mean, survival. Uh, I'm surprised when they when they took you up there. I mean, you make you dump your water out in the desert. I'm surprised they weren't like, okay, cool. Yeah, you're here. You got all these jackets and so take them off and your boots. Right. That well, was, um, I remember after I finished the desert environment, I, I'd done a lot of medical training um, prior to going into the Air Force. And uh the medics, you saw me, they're like, oh, Mike, yeah, you want to do some medical training. As a medical, almost professional, they're making fun of me. They're like, what do you think about this training? I was like, well, when I went through the STD clinic um, as a, uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, an MA there, to learn to treat STDs, I did not contract an STD. <laughs> and, they're, and they're like, that's fair. I'm like, but, you know, in the case of dehydration, you should probably go through it, but not for STD clinics. I gotta, but, yeah. In the desert, did, how did you guys get water? Or did you never get water? There's many ways to get water in the desert. Um, so, what, but you didn't have water within the first 20 hours. What is it? Yeah. Just dig? What, I don't well, that, so that, so okay. If you're gonna dig, where where would you dig in the desert to get water? Low spot. Low spot. All right. So best part would be like a dried up riverbed, obviously, right? If you get a riverbed and the inside turns or the outside turns, you can dig down and typically hit water. Otherwise, if you're just digging in like a sand dune, ain't no way you're gonna hit water. <laughs> Not forever. Um, don't dig in the sand dunes. Um, there's a lot of ways. So you can do that. Um, depending on the desert type, if there's like a sagebrush or, or sage, yeah, you can easily put a bag over that, break it off, and then it will collect the water out of the sage. You drink that. It tastes like very strong sage. You can also put a bag over the plant, tape it down, and then you'll get water off the sage plant when it's still alive. Um, you can pee into a cup. So you dig a hole, um, pee into the middle cup, put a tarp over it, and then kind of seal it and put a rock weighed down with another cup in there. What's going to happen is your piss is going to evaporate. It's going to hit the tarp. Then it's going to condense down off that rock and drip into that other cup. And then you can drink um, mostly pure um, water, mostly not urine. Uh, so that works really well. So we did all oh. that. We, we got to, what was cool is you get to do all of those things. Um, and if you want to know where to find this information, uh, Air Force Manual 64-4 is it. And that's all the training that we did was based off that manual. So No kidding. You can find it. Yeah, you can buy it online. I have a copy at my house. I would highly recommend it because it's all these old school methods. And it's it's awesome. We should do uh we should Mark, we should do some adventures with Grantham and just have him just totally just sear the sear the hell out of sear us. Sear the hell out of us. Sear the hell out of us. It's 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 great. So I, think, I still need to have it happen to me. I I haven't been well, that's, seared the I, hell out of I, <laughs> Just getting seared. <laughs> I, I was gonna ask though, because it sounds like you, you know, like you're kind of into like, you know, the, you know, well, the through hiking game yeah, a little bit. And but I had water. No, you didn't well, have water. You, you drank it out of you drink it out of the water well, source, and yeah, then you went without yeah. water. I I also didn't pack banana slugs in my ziploc. I didn't pack banana slugs. I was forced <laughs> to eat them. He knows the story. Yeah. He makes fun of me every time um, I tell him. Yeah, I should. I need. I need to do. I need to do something. Well, something tough, but. 
I also hear his stories, and I go, "Why did you not just give up? I could just give up." Because <laughs> maybe quit, he doesn't want to. Yeah, and you don't yeah. get your beret. And yeah, it's, it's not worth it, man. You don't want to be that guy. But uh, it it was uh, I'm just thinking about all the all the survival stuff. It was good. It was cool, man. Um, you know, like uh, something as simple as like a lighter in the desert, and like seeing that for miles under night vision. Or the mountain like, man who steals oh, your food. The mountain man who stole my food. That guy. Strange mountain man. Strange yeah, mountain strange man. mountain man. Like, and he was screwed doing with us. creepy things. Too. Yeah, he was, doing was he naked. like? Was he like? You know, uh, he made dolls of us. And was he like, like a, a real guy? Was that he like you a encounter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, unscripted. Like. Is that a side hustle that the Air Force pays creepy mountain man? Or I don't think he was paid by the Air Force because I spotted him later on thermal. But uh, just a guy who just lived in lived on the mountain and. Uh, you know, he saw Air Force personnel, so time to steal food, of course, which Actually. is awesome. Stealing from the government, that's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> could, you oh, imagine, could you imagine just like going back to your camp and there's a doll of you? Yeah. A, a in the doll woods. with like my hair made out of, um, you know, witch's hair and stuff. Um, not could you spooky, imagine you know. that though? That would be spooky. It was, scoop, it was I pretty just, spooky. Yeah. It was that's spooky, totally man. spooky. Ah. Was, like I said, I would have just been like, and then your food's gone. And you're like, no, it's cool. Looks like I got this bag of slugs, so like yeah, I'm totally. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even. Yeah. He I didn't take food. the bag. I got this doll. It's got like cool pants. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to think of like the worst thing we ate. Probably, been, probably banana been slug or clam. the the clam was just gross because it was big. It was just huge. Just a hard saltwater clam. clam? The, the, the banana slug of all the stories you told me was the one I bring up. I did probably g- because it's the grossest. I gagged on that one pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. That was not. That's gotta be rough. It had like spots like a leopard. Yeah, you know what kind of slug is so big? <laughs> so big. Oh, they, they're big. They're big, and then like they oh, go. Yeah, I oh yeah, man. So my big. my I friend was smart. Them. So she, one of the only girls to make. There's only like a couple girls who've made it through the sear pipeline. But remember when she did it, she would had no problem eating it. And later I was like, Brittany, how the f- did you do that? And she was like, She's like, I just thought of really good food, so her mouth watered a bunch. So when she put it in her mouth, she just let all the saliva wash it back. Oh, and just she didn't bloop. chew it, and she pretended to chew. I was like. Damn you, smart! Mm. I chewed that guy, and that was yeah. not good. Yeah. yeah, that was. So then, nutritious? when your saliva hardens, uh, their protein. What? When your saliva hardens, like what? It, what? What Chew, occurs? Keep chewing. <laughs> but like, I'm trying to picture. Yeah, is it hard crunchy? saliva? Is it crunchy? Like, no, your tongue starts it's to not like be able the, to move, or it what? It tastes weird, and your tongue feels weird. And I was gonna say, did, did your tongue go like numb? That's I what know, I the, heard. The, that, the way like, I can describe it is like, pick like the biggest booger out of your nose, times it by four, and then shove it in your mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is really gross. And then it's, it like hardens your saliva. Oh. It's really gross. Have you ever done the cinnamon challenge? No. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. Have you done that? Yeah, I got it really bad, though, where I, like, I kind of like, instead of like coughing out right away, I inhaled. Yeah, I Ooh. did, too. Yeah, and just, <gasps> and I like couldn't breathe for a while. I yeah. puked four times yeah. on that. Yeah. Because it just, you take straight cinnamon, like a full-on heaping tablespoon. No, I know, I know what like, it is. That's just like, just not a good idea. It just though. coats the throat, and that yeah. that stuff is... You guys, I don't know. That guys, was my brief uh, hey, Michael, 20 seconds of... Why don't you just quit? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I spit it out. That was my 20 uh, seconds of like what you experienced for a long time in the desert, I felt like. Nice. I it's, feel like it's comparable. You got the same training as Mike with the cinnamon. Yeah, challenge. with the cinnamon. I agree. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Mine was on a church mission trip. And, I was you know, literally they, going to say mine was at oh Young Life God. Camp. Yeah. 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 Of course. Maybe church Boys kids church, camp. church yeah. kids yeah. basically yeah. go through Sears school. Yeah. I don't disagree at all, actually. I don't disagree. What was I? I was a Royal Ranger. I did that. So what's maybe a Royal Ranger? It's a it's a church Boy Scout. Okay. Yeah. Isn't yeah. Boy Scouts of America like pretty big in churches? Uh, I think it's Royal really Ranger. big. It's more, at least Boy Scouts are really maybe, big in like the maybe. LDS church. I'm not sure. Yeah. I know that much. And most of my LDS friends like went through Boy Scouts and everything. They had a good time with it. Yeah. It's like it's like Boy Scouts, but you earn your pins from reciting Bible verses instead of mega based. Making a so it's like a one sharp. Yeah. yeah. Mega based. And yeah. then the final is the cinnamon challenge. Correct. The final is the <laughs> yeah. cinnamon that's challenge. That's actually now apparently the fast track to becoming a seer instructor. I, yeah. That, that's what I gather. Yeah, you've you've connected the dots. When Mike okay. said, you know, I don't know how they do it anymore, what he was talking about was. It's the cinnamon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the changes that they've made. Okay. Well, the funny part is, I think the 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 funniest part about doing survival is just like the weird dudes you run into, like Mountain Man. Uh, we were out in Forks, uh, Washington, doing like a small survival training, and uh, I guess we ended up uh, sleeping at a camp where either it was either moonshiners, people who sold coke, or people who stole wood. I don't know. One of the three. So we're camped out there. <laughs> we hear like this car roll up at like three a.m. and we've been working till two, so we were. <clears throat> Sorry, I was thinking about the banana slug. <laughs> <laughs> we were just getting to sleep, and it rolls up, and like, like 
all these lights turn on in the car because they're because I think they're getting ready to go back into the woods to to do whatever. And then like they immediately shut them off. And then I hear this guy. He's like, "Who are they, Earl?" He's like, oh, "I don't know. We gotta get out of here." Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, "Who are they, Earl?" He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> then uh, oh, so that same that same event, bringing up all these memories. We were uh, we were at our camp, and this forest ranger uh, ha- happens home. No, it was a sheriff, just like a local sheriff, like drives up. He's like, sees us all. We're all in like military garb, and we're like carrying wood, which is you can't just take wood, right? Mm. He's like, "What's your boys doing?" You know, we're like, "Hey, we're uh, with the airport." He goes, "Oh, it's them survival boys, very cool." You know, so he talks to us, and I'm like, I realize I had like forty dollars in my pants. I'm like, "Hey, yo, you serve?" He's like, "I oh, sure did." I'm like, "That's really cool." We haven't eaten for two weeks. What do you think about going down and buying us a pizza? And he's like, mm. he's like thinking about it. I'm like, I got forty bucks. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And we're Done. like, pizza, pizza. Oh my gosh! So, dude, Did he come back? An hour and a half later, our cadre drives up <laughs> with the pizza, and, I'm, <laughs> and we're like, oh, we're done. He's like, was this for you? I was like. Never, never. Who would bring us pizza? This is another one of your drills. He's like, do you know Sheriff Pierce? I'm like, oh, we're done. He sold us out. Oh yeah, we we got destroyed for that one. Oh damn! I know. Isn't that survival though? You were taking advantage I of was the taking environment. I made man. contact mm-hmm. with a local. I convinced him with filthy lucre to bring us local cuisine. <laughs> what, is it, what you learned is in every survival kit, forty bucks. Yeah, forty. Bu- that's that's actually need. not if so. Like having well, like that a was valuable pre-inflation. It's actually like four hundred now. Oh yeah, um, good yeah. point. <laughs> Rolex watches, gold, some type of valuable is a good thing to have on you. Is it real yeah. talk? Yeah, Rolex, because like everyone knows what a Rolex is, right? You're like, hey, sure. Please take me in your home, Rolex. Interesting. Gold. You didn't know. Yeah. Good valuables to barter with. It's not, it's not just a, put that Rolex on the end of a string and yeah. just. Yeah, or you can do your hundred percent off coupon, which is a gun. I believe you say I'm coming into your home. I will. Though, I'll be, I will yeah, be yeah, is it the question <laughs> anymore? Different. Yeah. Here, here is my authorization. Um, ding dong, <laughs> ding dong. But yeah, survival is a good time. What's that uh, Parks and Rec reference where he is like, "All right, here's your IOU." He's like, "This just says I can do whatever I want." <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, uh, that was when it. somebody comes to tell him that he can't do something in the park. Like it was yeah. like, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's a good show. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> Boy, well, without I, we're almost approaching so two many, hours. I don't I think know. we've ever done this before. Mark. I know. This is but like, I love it. Uh, we got to do a whole survival. I'm in. We, I'm tripling. Oh my gosh. Okay, no, okay. it's gonna cost so you guys in. like fifteen optics, but I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, done. I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> And a Rolex. <laughs> hey. The Rolex. We're on the marketing team, so basically, you know, we just like, just, just yeah, optics. I know. Yeah, you know, that's how it works. Decks. Actually, it's a very, like, homey, very nice environment here. It is. It's nice and warm. Well, that's I, good. I, I yeah. fed, like, two dogs since I've been here. Good. Yeah, it's been nice. Really nice. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we appreciate I mean, obviously, it's been amazing having you guys here uh, come out. Glad you guys got to... See the new optic, and we appreciate oh, the kind yeah. words, and it's just it's been great. Yeah, so just wait till you see the review; it's not going to be very kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nervous it's laughter. Very good, yeah. Mike is like, "No, I got this." Oh, yeah. that's right. They're kind to the face, but then the internet with the uh, review. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like, "Yo, these vortex guys, whatever." Yeah. I think we've harassed at least half the employees here, and all of them have taken it really well. So yeah, they've they been must, they've been pretty they good be about it. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're pretty well seasoned to yeah. the harassment. Yeah, yeah. That around here, good. That makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of co-harassment that goes on so yeah i feel like that's how you build a good work environment good work it is harassment. harassment you can't <laughs> handle harassment you probably don't have a good if you aren't being no. bullied it's not good it means no one likes you it's true yeah. that's actually like that's some truth right there yeah people must like me an awful lot around here Jim. <laughs> tell you what mark a you're no, out there most no, liked the no bullying environment is a bad environment yeah that's true do you guys have like employee of the week awards God no. no. You should have a, well, then you should have a most liked <laughs> award. And just one. Maybe you should have like a most hated. <laughs> Everyone. Oh, actually, we'd probably. That's much more like applicable. That's much more our speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most hated person in the office this week. Anybody is. who wears stone glacier. And it's always got to be for something like <laughs> semi ridiculous. Yeah, we like, do yeah. that. We do that at, our, at yeah. our company. Bought two cheese pizzas instead yeah. of a pepperoni and a cheese. Yeah. Can't yeah. confirm, but pretty sure this guy blew out the bathroom. Most hated this <laughs> week. You know, facts. Like that. Big facts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll start the most hated. 
And then uh, can I have this? That's right my here? big takeaway. Oh, that's a, that's your that's a takeaway. staple. That's a staple. Like of this a stapler table. or a staple? No, it's not a stapler, but it's that's a that's a key staple of our table. Like, it looks kind of heavy. Been, it's been there forever. It's really it's not. Really <laughs> oh my god! I don't even. Know. What is Sometimes it from, we just. It's, it's been here since we got here. But what four is it? years ago, somebody was like, "Hey, we're clearing out all this crap." It was a bunch of like. Uh, it was a bunch of stuff that we were showing to dealers that they could use to display products, and oh. they didn't like this one. And we were like, "It says Vortex on it. We'll take it." Yeah, yeah it's, it's a wood block. It's a wood block. We, uh, wood block. we got the table that we set things on, but then when we do, sometimes we set things on that too. Oh yeah, yeah. like a skull. It's a good. Yeah, it's like good a setting on skull. Setting things on. Oh, very cool. Block. Well, should we close it out? I think we I should. I don't want to because I'm having I so much fun. I know. I know. I know. Well, all right then. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Thank you. Thank you guys for taking for the us. time yeah, you. to yeah. chat with us. It was it's super a, fun. I enjoyed uh, my Vortex experience. Well, Good. I am satisfied it. with my Vortex product. Yeah. <laughs> Please leave us a five-star review. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's do it again. Hell yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Let's do it again. Awesome. Right on. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.